and welcome to Hero Ward University Malaysia. Your well-being is our utmost priority and we have worked hard to ensure that there is a safe and welcoming environment for you here. Let us take you around the campus. First up, let's get registered. It's really easy. Download the My Sajatra app, scan the QR code and check in to the campus. At the entrance, your temperature will also be taken. If your temperature is more than 37.5 degrees Celsius, you will not be allowed on campus. If you are symptomatic with mild cough, flu or even low fever, please stay at home. As you know, the quickest way for viruses to spread are through your hands. Always make sure that your hands are clean often or use the hand sanitizers that are available at the corridor. While sanitizers are being installed for your convenience, be mindful, it is always better to wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds whenever you can. As of 1st August 2020, the Malaysian government has made it compulsory to wear a face mask in public places. On campus, you are required to wear one when entering the campus and between class and offices. You have the option of removing them when you are in class or office. As you walk around the campus, you will notice there are a lot of marked areas like this. This will make it easier for you to adhere to proper physical distancing measures dictated by the standard operating procedures set out by the government. It is also evident at the library and the laboratories where the seats are marked, and even the elevators too. Take note that only four people are allowed in the elevators at any one time. If you are in a hurry, we recommend that you take the stairs, which is healthier for you too. All students' areas, including all high touch points, are clean at least twice a day by our janitorial team to ensure your safety. We ask that you do the same to ensure that your personal hygiene is taken care of too. Prior to entering the main library, you need to check in with the My Sujatra app. And once you've done so, please take a number because this system is designed to prevent overcrowding in our main library space. To borrow books, we use the click and collect system to ensure a minimal contact experience. To do so, please use your phone to browse from our discovery system and then find the book and reserve it online. We encourage all meetings are to be held online. However, should staff wish to use the meeting room, we are counting on you to ensure all the surfaces such as tables, keyboards are sprayed down before you start the meeting and once again before you leave the space. If you're using a microphone, a disposable cover is available for your use. Please dispose the cover correctly after the use of the mic. Never reuse the cover for other individuals. Please wipe down the mic handle once you're done. Before entering the lab, please sanitize your hands and wear a face mask and a lab coat. Enter the labs and wait to be graded by the laboratory staff in charge. Once graded, the staff in charge will guide you to your designated work area where you may begin your work. Once you are done, please clean up your workstations and inform the staff in charge before leaving the lab. If you are using our shuttle buses, you are required to be scanned for your temperature upon entry and check in with the My Sejahtera app. We encourage you to sanitize your hand before entering the bus and upon exiting. A face mask is compulsory as long as you are on the bus. Our buses are clean three times a day and once a week. The entire bus is deep cleaned. In line with the public transport SOP, issued by the government, there is no physical distancing on the bus. As such, you are encouraged to limit your interaction with the other passengers on the bus. Once you are at our accommodation, you will be required to submit for another check-in and temperature check. Physical distancing protocol are in place while you are at the lobby area. Once you are at your own unit, you are able to move freely. However, please note that no guests are allowed within your unit at all times. Only the tenants of the unit are permitted. If you exhibit any symptoms of the virus while you are at the accommodation, please inform the warden or front office immediately. An emergency SOP is in place to enable your referral to a nearby clinic or hospital. A flourishing community is a community that is both 
healthy and safe in the first place. The procedures that we put in place may be burdensome, but we really hope that all of us are going to abide by them and do our part to make our place healthy and safe so that we can all flourish and be the best versions of ourselves. Together, we can make this place a healthy and safe campus. Together, Together we can. can. Anniversaries and birthdays are moments for us to remember and reflect. And they are moments to remember the people who have been with us on the journeys of our lives. These journeys are made what they are by the people who were with us and by the dreams that we share together. It's great to see our community thrives and flourishes despite the challenges that we face. And as we look at our history, whether it's the eight years that we spend in Malaysia or the 200 years that we had since our inception, I look with great hope to the future. When I first started with Professor Bob Craig, the founding provost, we had no license to operate and no campus. We needed a resilient team who believed in the vision and would be willing to do anything along the way. Some of the amazing founding team remain on this journey till this day. While it's been said that it's not the destination but the journey that's important, I'm so very proud of what we have achieved. I'm always in awe of the passion and the drive that the team has and I'm really glad to be part of it. It has been a pleasure to work with an organisation whose vision, ethos and strategy resonates deeply within me. I couldn't ask for more. What I really like most about the organisation is people here are genuinely caring for the staff and students. As such, I'm proud to be associated with Harriet Ward University in Malaysia. When I first joined Harriet Ward University, I was very excited. It was the first time that I got involved in the early stage of operations of a university. It was an invaluable experience and I will always treasure it. Five years ago, I made one of my best decisions in my career by working in Harold Ward University, Malaysia. As a global university, I worked together with global communities and boy, they had colour on how I see things in life. Here's to all, to the future. I have joined Harriet Watt University virtually. It's a novel way of joining. Harriet Watt is not a normal university, it's a global team. Harriet Watt University is the right university to study or work at. I'm very grateful for Harriet Watt for helping me to articulate my purpose and allowing me to reach for that work. I'm glad I chose Harriet Watt. The lecturers are always approachable and they're constantly asking you to ask questions. Thank you, Harriet Watt. Happy birthday, Harriet Watt, Malaysia!
We are here. Welcome back. Welcome back to some more Wild Rift Summoners Odyssey. My name's Shea. And I'm Dan Right Fierce. And of course, this tournament is organized by IRL Asia. And we are partnered with Homey, Scope Solutions, and Harriet Ward University. Yes, and not to mention our sponsors, we do have Inch Theory and Sadie's Malaysia. Yes, we are here from yesterday. We had two days of Summoners Wild Rift Odyssey as well. And this time today, we're going to continue with another set. So another two days of Summoners Odyssey. So it's going to be a best of three format. And tomorrow, we're going to be back with the top four and the grand finals, which will be a best of five here. Yeah, so yesterday we had uh, up to 32 teams. Uh, 30, 31, I think, I believe. 32. Yeah, 32 teams make it all the way through. And one team came on top. It was, of course, Mocha from Malaysia. It's been a lot while since we've seen a, another team that didn't come from like the Philippines that took the first place. So really, really intense match. Took it all the way to the last and final game of that grand finals. So hopefully you get to see a little bit of a, a you know, things getting a little bit spiced up over into today. Of course, it being a best of three, we did see a couple of upsets earlier on. I think in the bracket, we did see Level Up didn't make it to the top uh, top eight. Top four, I think. Top four, yeah. He, yeah. They, didn't, they didn't quite make it there. So uh, really, hopefully we get to see a little bit of upsets like that here and there. But at the end of the day, only one team will come out of this. Yeah, not, not today. Yeah, Level Up did lose to Alap and Puso yesterday. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so... They weren't able to get to the top four. So the top four this this time yesterday was super, super stacked. We had Alap, we had Fervin, and of course the last game we had Lakan. Lakan just showed amazing prowess in the grand finals, but got taken down 3-2 by Mocha here. So today they're gonna have another chance, I believe. So that's a small spoiler. I think they're really joining today. Like, confirm, oh. They want to get their first place today after so long off not getting the summoners. Odyssey for Wild Rift here and before we get into any of that please do not forget to like the stream and follow our page and like our page we just hit 5,000 follows and we want to get to that 10,000 mark so do press your follow button like you know tomorrow call your friends call anyone to just get the follows in of course we want to give you more tournaments more games and more content and if you want to even support us even more directly you can get the supporter badge as well you can get it right over there if you are on a pc yeah so you show to your friends hey i'm a supporter of viral asia and you get access to exclusive content as well and last but not least if you want to show your love on stream please do send some stars with stars we'll be able to show you a nice nice promo video here yeah, a little, some of those promo videos are actually coming from a little bit of our TikTok. If you guys sort of like the content that you see in those promo videos, feel free to take a look at our TikTok at IRL Asia. So if you like all of that, please do join and follow. And we're already getting in some support, some general support in the chat for everybody participating in the tournament. Really, really nice to see all of you. The comments are always so, you know, wholesome. You like my jacket? Oh, of course, of course. It's a nice jacket, man. <laughs> ah, see? Don't play play. I got my uh, monkey kill sharing guns all. Then you all over the la, over the Yeah, but the last time you threw your jutsu off, you, everything was in disarray last time I remember it, so. Gotta keep the genjutsu. I need to keep my chakra low a bit yeah, yeah. for the stream. Control, okay? uh, Must control my chakra a bit, of course. With great power comes great responsibility. So all these teams as well, they have a lot of power. Uh, and yeah. their responsibility is to win the championship today. So uh, again, yesterday was such an amazing game. A lot of amazing games to watch especially. Oh, yeah. And Mocha was just on a roll. But this time, let us take a look at all the teams that have joined today. So let us see their brackets here. 32 teams. We have a bunch of letters on the top left. Q-W-E-R-P-A-O-Q-T-A-S-D. I... I think I someone know. fell on their keyboard. Someone just face down on the keyboard a bit laugh. So uh, <laughs> that is going to be the team on top. And they're going to be up against Unlighten DEM. We also have Archon Alliance. Oh, nice. They are going to be up against Wild Bros. Mona, we have Panic Time. Don't panic. Uh, you have to uh, stay calm, okay? Be, be careful. Uh -huh. They're going to be up against Bow Guy Team. We have Pillars Revengers. They're going to be up against Wild Bros. Kings. We have Mad Dogs versus Boom. We have LF Sponsor versus Shot Glass. We have Ultima Sigma versus Seed. And Alpha Pearl versus Daybreak Moon 2. Seal off for the left side of the brackets here. Yeah, and on the right side, we do have. I, I think this is going to be a, a buy for a Sinag right here. 
Uh, Mocha is back, and they're Ooh. gonna be fighting against Team FTL. Uh, Forza International gonna have to face off against Ultimate. Forza, I think they made it to the top uh, top eight. two. Top two. Oh, oh yesterday, sorry. top eight, yeah. Yeah, yesterday was top eight, but they're, they're a strong team. They've been able to go to the Grand Finals, I believe, at least. At least a couple of times in my memory. Uh, team Red Star is gonna have to fight Feverin, who made it to the top, uh, top four yesterday. Uh, Enlightened gonna have to fight Atlas. Perlas and Singalong, uh, they are back, but they're gonna be fighting Pillar uh, Scent. I think that's first for Sentinel, I believe. I'm not yeah. too sure. Uh, Level Up is back with the uh, with the Vengeance, but they're gonna have to fight Elo D Law. Oh. And Monochrome, I actually liked how Monochrome played uh, yesterday, but they weren't able to really seal off the games. But they have to fight off uh, Alap. Alap and and uh, um, Buso. Um, Buso. Yes, I Will of Fire. Will of Fire, ah. Ah. So they are they were in the top four yesterday. So today, yeah, obviously looking to get into the grand finals oh, here. Yeah. So. It is still going to be quite a match today. We're going to have three total rounds today and we'll continue with the last two tomorrow for the top four and the grand finals. It's already just the start of the tournament, man. Yep. So no problems there. Hopefully, no clown shows. <laughs> We're going to see clown shows 100%. But with that, we are already going to get into the band phase for the first game here. Mad Dogs versus Boom. I D Boom ID was the first game that we saw uh, yes, in yes. Uh, on Monday yep. for the first round of Wild Rose Odyssey here. So uh, Mad Dogs this time are gonna be having the first pick, so they will ban out Diana immediately. And boom, they're probably gonna ban out Gragas is a big ban, Camille's a big ban, Zix yeah. is a big ban here. And uh, yeah, okay. they're gonna take out the Gragas. Gragas is just super, super strong. It's a lot of utility, a lot of damage, and just uh, all around very durable. Even if you build full AP, and they're gonna take out the Zix as well. So okay. leaving the Camille in the pool does seem like Maddox are definitely wanting to snag the Camille up for themselves to get the first pick there. So it's gonna be a strong, strong first pick, but leaving still a lot of champions in the pool. Galio is in the pool. We do have Rengar in the pool as yeah. well. And of course, uh, we do also oh, uh, get it no longer in the pool, yeah. so yeah. It looks like the first pick Camille, they could Boom could reply with maybe a Kaisa Janna yeah. as a as a reply here. It's gonna be quite a decent reply, and they also have Akali to go for as well. Yeah, again, we also we see a lot of Janna getting count counter picking the uh, the Camille often and not because when a Hextech Ultimatum drops down and you force the Camille off the alt, right, it disengages almost uh, right away. So they're gonna have to be uh, keeping an eye out for but for that. But that's only when the Janna is around. Of course, we do see other options like I think Tristana can also push away. Uh, Camille, Lee Sin can also do so, but. I again, there's still so much that that is not the main problem when it comes to Camille. It's also her first skill doing true damage, you know, charged up after five seconds. Mm. It, it, it's insane, but a lot of utility, definitely worthy of that first pick or that really high priority band. But Ziggs, I, I still like the bands here. Yeah, right? the bands all make sense. So they're far. all they're all. Bandos, they look like they want to a prioritize mainly on the mid bands here, uh -huh. and yes. Obviously, Camille in the pool, you gotta go for Camille. Got Camille it. is just way too strong. And yesterday, we did see Chalice and Platypus play a super, super great game uh -huh. on, their, on their respective champions here. And yeah, they are gonna get the Rengar and Janna here yes, immediately. Like it. It's gonna be a very, very strong reply. They want to secure the Rengar to get that, to try to snowball early on and just melt people in the mid game. Because Rengar, once he gets the stacks, man, just deletes everyone on the map here. We did see that Britannia used to mainly play by a lot uh -huh. during his games, but it looks like he wants to secure the Rengar here. Just get a solid, solid, a lot of burst damage coming from your side. Yeah, but again, we also have new champions in the pool. We also have Irelia and Riven, but we haven't seen them pop up yet at, at all. all as of late. I, I think they're still trying to give some space and try to figure out how these champions work in the meta. So we're going to be seeing Jarvan and Corky getting picked up inside of Mad Dogs. I do like it because you're going to also have your, your version of a headset <laughs> ultimated with the Cataclysm right there. And as long as they're not touching Corky, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's already a win right there and he's going to be able to get a lot of damage. But the Kaisa getting picked up for the side of Boom, I do like it. And Platypus is actually going to go Twisted Fate. So going to be able to really help the Rengar get that uh, fight going and really finish it off and that's what you want to do early in the game so when the not even when the alt gets up where like as soon as like they they realize that they can get a pick off they might just all commit and go for it but let's just take a look at what mad dogs is going to reply in kind yeah i do think the twisted fate ban is also a denial ban, denial pick actually uh, yeah, yeah, uh, coming pick. from their side because camille twisted fate is a very very classic combo just super super strong creates so much pressure around the map already is a great great reply against twisted fate and they're gonna go for the zona here so they're looking to try to get some sustain some great t fights and tufts of course he has a choice to make 
We've seen him play an amazing, amazing Renekton. Uh -huh. We've seen him play an amazing, amazing Darius as well. And it's going to do quite decently against Camille here. So both teams that draft are looking very, very solid. The only spicy pick-ish is going to be uh, the Sona here. Oh yeah. The Sona not, very picked so, not really picked so much, but of course, it's a super, super strong, has a lot of utility, can make a lot of TikTok plays as well. So uh, from the draft, honestly, it looks pretty much even. It really comes down to the execution. Yeah, so again, liking both drafts. Of course, the Sona does make a lot of sense for the side of Mad Dogs. Not a terrible pick or anything like that. Uh, definitely a little bit of, you know, out of the ordinary for sure. But it does work in this combination. So Mad Dogs, I feel like they did really well. They're going to be able to get to Camille first. But top lane, Camille going to have to see exactly how they're going to be pu pushing this off. Again, Camille does play top lane, can also play jungle. But you're going to be laning against the Darius here. And that's actually not a lot of fun as, uh, as a Camille because he wants want to stay in front you want to make sure that you know you're, you're getting your headset ultimatum down and you're literally caging them in with you but the longer you stay in the more bleed stacks and all that and if you're a really good darius if you do see they go for the tactical sweep you can actually do the uh i think the apprehend to make sure that the sweet spot doesn't hit so you don't get slowed down and then you force the camille to run away but let's just see exactly how things are going to break down as we get into the first game of today for the summoners odyssey again we have on the blue side we will have mad dogs playing there and on the red side we will have boom from indonesia playing yeah so already off to a great great start both drafts looking super super solid it looks like mad dogs they want to just try to get a lot of team fight going with the sona with the jarvan and jay of course trying to lock down probably chalice or platypus here but it really does it really goes to show how very very difficult both of these comps they have to work because boom they need to get a lot of early games going once platypus hits level five here they need to get as many kills going they need platypus to really scale up and he's doing very very well actually already against xena here so it is looking quite quite nice oh, but no. in the okay. bottom side katana already has to use the flash so uh, very interesting summoner choices actually coming from the side of Mandos. They have the exhaust and the heals here. So they really, really want to deny as much damage as they can. And Tufts is looking to try to gain some stacks onto Jay. But Jay is going to be fine. As long as it's not a fight stack, it's not going to be the worst thing. But here, it's going to be quite scary though. Xena already brought down to a sliver of health. Has to use the honey fruit here. Xena might actually get caught by V Britannia. But there is going to be like a ward. It. And it looks like Vi Britannia has to just back off with the flash there. So it's going to be quite worth it for the side of Mad Dogs. But already Demski just making the rotation. So boom, they are emphasizing a lot on this mid lane. Yeah, so they're actually stacking up. There are three people down onto the mid lane from the boom side right now. So going to be interesting to see how they go. But the ward is actually in there. They're going to be able to spot the Jarvan hiding out. The flash has to get burned. And it looks like it's going to be disengaged. And they're not going to be even able to contest the top scuttle right there as there are going to be four people around that area right now. So they're going to try to just make sure that they get the bottom scuttle. But it does not want to trade that with. But it looks like they're going to be fighting it out in the river right here. But Tufts is actually taking a lot of damage right now. But oh my goodness, they're almost getting a pick up right here. It looks like they Knight will be able to take the first blood on the Jarvan right now. And now they're forced to retreat. Yonagi has to use the Valkyrie to try and get away. So he is going to be able to survive. But the early recall for all of them is going to be used right there. So has to be very, very careful. First blood going to boom. Really did well to sort of try to catch them getting the Rift Scuttle. And were able to... They weren't able to take it away from them. But going away with first blood, it's a very, very good trade in their favor. And now they're looking at about... Oh, a look at the top side win. though. Look at that top side already. Jay just has to back off and run away. Tufts also has the Noxian Guillotine, so it's going to be a lot of burst damage. Jay immediately has to go for the reset here. He did go for the Ignite to try to be a bit aggressive as Tufts is going to go for the defensive route. So, uh, quite interesting that Tufts actually going for the Conqueror here. We do see sometimes Darius, they do like to go for the face rush to get the chase down, but maybe because Jay, he is the... Uh, What's he called? Camille. Ah, Camille here oh, yeah. does have the grapple hook. So even with the even with the face rush, quite difficult to chase her down. So it kind of makes sense. But boom, are off to a very very great start, especially with Platypus getting the early early first blood here. And this bottom side is not looking good for the side of Mad Dogs. Katana is only level three. V Britannia is going to use the ultimate. It's going to be a four man gank here on to Katana. They immediately take her down. And now V Britannia has to back away the monsoon. It's almost going to save Xena, but not going to be able to get the save. And Damski is going to be so oh, low what? here. But Chal is able to get the kill onto Yanagi, but it's all alone under the tier two. There is going to be a trade right there. So two for two. 
in favor of but not gonna be in favor of any team here. So boom, they do get they do bring some rotations, but it's still a decent, decent kill, especially taking down Yanagi once again. Yeah, it'll be really, really be questionable why uh, Chandler's actually went up the, to the tier 2 right there. Could have tried to run together with the team. It was, of course, I think the Jenna that was tanking a lot of the tower, but really good dodge onto the tactical sweep right there. Will not get slowed. Will be able to hide behind the tower right there. <clears throat> and with that, I think they're going to be trying to get this top tower down. Three of them are already up here. Mad Dogs wants to try to equalize the kills right here. They're going to just try to force him, but you're walking into a Darius, and that just might be what he wants to happen right there. Uh, and it looks like the Camille is going to be <laughs> dashing away right now. But two, two people onto the mid lane right here. I think they're uh, just switching up and rotating off really, really fast. Of course, we don't have to worry about the Twisted Fate all in a little bit because it's already been used. But it looks like they're going to be able to take this Ocean Drake quite comfortably. But the rest of the team, they're actually going to be trying to fight this off right now. Four members already close to the Dragon Pit, while two are just trying to juggle this Dragon right now. And it looks like they might not even want to try to take it. They're more looking towards the tower. We do see teams often go for tower gold instead of trying to get the dragon in this instance. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be that instant though because there's not really that much priority towards any lane for any team since so both teams definitely want to maybe try to contest it here. It looks like Mandos, they are just going to be resetting. They're going to take their time as Boom are going to be already starting up the dragon here before members in the pit. But as I said, Mandos, they're definitely going to try to contest it. The dragon is going to be taken down a little bit low. Hello. Jay does go in Whoa. and he steals the dragon as well. And he's already getting the Hextech ultimate onto the side of Tufts. Tufts stuck in the pit, stuck in the ultimate, but they do get the kill onto Katana and Tufts is still alive. So Boom, even even though they lost the dragon, they're able to get two kills, a double kill already. Four challenges and looking for one more. The technical sweep and Black Pippers try to go for that flash. He flashes into the rape pit right there, so he will not be able to get it. Sorry, not rape uh, raptors. Sir. Yeah, oh, yeah, but but actually really, really solid stuff from coming in from Chalice. Was very, very aware that the Ikithian Rain would be enough to kill the uh, the Ari right there. So was able to use Killer Instinct to run in right there. But oh my goodness, Tufts is actually getting a lot of damage onto Yanagi. And even though Yanagi does deal a lot of damage though, but you cannot stay and fight uh, Tufts right there. Because getting the 5 stack into anything would be really, really dangerous right here. So it is going to just be a retreat down in the bot lane. Meanwhile, over into the top, it looks like they are not going to be switching lanes right here. But they will look at the, the Reptile right now as it just begins to spawn. I think they're going to be looking more towards trying to get rid of Bot Tower right now for the side of Mad Dogs. But boom, they have a very comfortable lead. They could just try to take the Reptile right now. Might even uh, just just give up on the towers just for this instance to make sure that they that the other team won't be able to take the Reptile here. Yeah, boom. I'm just going to be able to start out the Reptile pretty much uncontested unless Mad Dogs, they do have... Jarvan there on towards the top side, maybe wanting to go for some, some contest, but he's all alone. The rest of the team are on the other side, so even if he tries to go in, he doesn't really have to follow and the Cataclysm only now is going to be up and Tops is already in the flat line, but a nice time from Sona gets four right there and not able to save Yanagi. Yanagi keeps getting taken down and he's going to be just detrimental to his growth in his items right there, so... Boom, are just looking so, so good. Even they didn't need the Ocean Dragon to feel good in this game because the Ocean Dragon is still the weakest dragon so far and now they're going to be able to convert it into more turrets. They were able to get the first turret of the game towards the melee and now they're able to even get more. Jay just slip pushing, not really able to join the fight. So Boom are going to be super, super happy with that with especially the momentum that they're going with. Yeah, so they're doing very, very well controlling the pace of the match right there. They're actually taking objectives at their pace. They're not being forced, you know, okay, they're forcing this, we have to fight it out and all that. So they're doing a really, really solid job right here. And looking at the items right now, it is going to be uh, the Twisted Fate along with the Kai'Sa that is actually being very, very well farmed. And the Blade of the Rune King is finished for the side of Kai'Sa right there. And Executioner's Culling is coming up. And the BF Sword right there might be going into something a bit more defensive later on, but not too sure what they're going to be completing that with right here but Tufts he's alone onto the top side three members are right there I don't think he knows I don't know whether he wants to really fight this out but honestly he does have a tower to run behind to but I don't he does have his flash and his uh, barrier so he will be able to survive quite a bit so they're actually not going to be able to fight that right now the Rift Herald instead is going to be dropped into the bot lane right now so they're going to be looking to siege that up and probably take it down really fast and it looks like Tufts is actually running the top lane right now trying to force Jay off the lane yeah, and Boom already securing three tier 1 turrets so, so quickly and trying to apply a lot of pressure 
into the bottom side of the map so Maddox they have to deal with it especially with the Rift Herald there B Britannia uh -oh. is gonna be trying to do some damage but Platypus is gonna get the gold card onto Xena Xena does not have a dash away taking a lot of damage from Chalice as well just barely able to escape on a Chalice he doesn't have the flash he just used it and now the monsoon is trying to save Chalice's life but here look at Tubbs not able to get the execute with the ultimate but he's still gonna be alive the Mad Dogs they do not have the damage and behind Britannia gets the snipe right there so he does take down Jay and boom going to be able to just be one man up and not just one man up they're gonna be able to not have to not fight the Camille here so a big big win coming from the side able to secure this Cloud Dragon very very easily yeah, but Cataclysm is still in the picture right here, but they're not going to be equipped enough and fast enough to be able to take this Cloud Dragon away. And this is going to be a very, very good Dragon to have in your pocket. Now you're going to have to worry about that uh, movement speed coming in for the rest of the team, especially on a Darius. That's not fun. If you're going to have to run away from the Bleed Sacks, you're not going to be able to run fast enough away. So really, really scary that they have that in their pocket right now. Boom is actually looking very, very solid in this game as they are leading up to a 6k gold lead right now over Mad Dogs right now. And in this part of the game, Game, it does mean quite a bit that is a lot of items getting completed onto the side of boom and you're gonna have to be very careful picking your fights right here so we did see Sona all actually being used to try and take out V Britannia uh, by Britannia earlier on but it was not really worth it as he was still able to escape uh, but Sona's alts, they have been able to land pretty well, but just the follow-up has been quite lacking. Even in the last one, it was, of course, Yanagi that died off earlier on, so was not able to get all that damage into the rest of the fight. Yeah, and already Maddox really want to get this top turret here, but look where Boom are. They're gonna just take them down and punish this attempt already. The Cataclysm is out, but look at the damage. The healing um, already just healing them up, and Chalice is gonna get another one. Only two left in the top side here. They're gonna get chased down. Chalice really wants this kill. The charm does land, but not enough to save their life as they take four in the top side right there. Boom, are ruthless. And they're gonna even just get this Baron here since there's no one left on the side of Mad Dogs to even try to contest it. Tufts is just creating a lot of pressure around the map. Mad Dogs, they are sniffing it out. So Jay is making his way there, but the Baron's already so low and they're just gonna get it so, so quickly. And Jay, he's not anywhere. Tufts spots him out, gets the every hand with the Decimate, but not going to commit further as boom. They're gonna be happy with that. But Jay is gonna go in with the Hextate Ultimatum, but he just uses it <laughs> to just annoy him a little bit because he that's not gonna commit. And he doesn't know where Boom's members are. He just has to give it up as Boob are looking at almost a 10,000 gold lead here. Yeah, and now the most farm is still going to be Chalice, but Rengar is actually really, really close behind. So Viper Tanya going to go for the Lothada there, goes for the Dust Blade right here. And it looks like a little bit more armor penetration and crit coming in for the side of Chalice right there. Going to be very, very worried about this, but look at how brave he is. Going to be running into two people right now, does use the ult. Look at how low the Sona is, the, even with the Void Seeker going uh, to be taking a lot of damage right there. But finishes off the job, goes for the single pickoff and was excellent right there does not need the follow-up coming in from platypus with any teleport or anything like that's going to be able to keep a hold of that so that's going to be counting out really really well and it looks like this mid tower is going to go down with pretty much no contest as tufts is split pushing over onto the top lane right here in viper tanya it's actually off into the bottom trying to get priority but oh my goodness it is going to be tough that's taking a lot of damage but the sustain coming in right now he's still alive he's still going to be able to fight and down goes the r right there Senna going to be taken out of the picture and it looks like they're going to be pushing out this top tower right now as it is going to fall down and all that's left right now is the inhibit towers and the lone bot tower right now that is getting pushed by Vibritania. Yeah and boom just dominating every single part of the map. They can't even get a gank onto Tufts and they're just going to be able to siege this top turret as well with the barrier buffs on every single lane able to just pretty much get this inhib turret pretty much with no no hesitation right here and Mad Dogs they're trying their best to defend they're trying but already losing the bottom side turret they're gonna lose the mid one as well so so quickly at that look at the gold lead almost 15,000 gold here it's gonna be so so strong as now not even 15,000 17,000 here for the side of boom and just in time they're gonna reset and go for this infernal here so great choice not over committing as they are looking for what is important which is the objectives here
Yeah, they're doing really, really well. They had the Baron buff. So as long as we have this Baron buff, we're going to be trying to use it up to its best right there and realize that when it was wearing off, got all the towers down that they needed. There's all that's left is the top tower and just in time, the dragon comes up. But it looks like they're going to be trying to go for this. Again, this is a really big force fight coming in from the side of Boom. They want uh, this dragon. There's not going to be a lot for the side of Mad Dogs to take it away from them. They have to go for a steal right here. And uh, they again, they, they don't have any problems with this. They're going to be able to take this at all day okay, but Darwin, okay no not gonna be able to get the steal in time but we'll be able to run in righteous glory gonna be able to just run as fast as he can mm. Zena is gonna get caught out right there not gonna be able to recall in time and that apprehend was questionable but they will be able to run away right here but no they're gonna get a hexa ultimatum gonna be landing but a really really good uh zonia's right there to stop a two men all coming in from sona but not gonna be able to last that long and with that they're gonna be able to finish up the rest of the team with no contest it looks like they're really really close to an ace right there but the rest of the team does manage to run away there yeah they're just gonna be able to end the game here waiting for the minion waves there's gonna be the super minions coming in and mad dogs it looks like they are ready for this loss right there <laughs> oh. as boom just gonna be able to take this first game super super convincingly only losing two kills in that entire game able to just play so so well in this first round once again they're just so so strong especially a team like maddox that's getting demolished right there so really really solid stuff coming in from boom again i like their the way they play they're very very fast and they're very efficient right they have the whole big picture playing while they're not just going for kills every single time when they are comfortable in the lead, they look at the objectives more. They're not just going like, nah, we gotta stomp them out, we're gonna extend, we gotta get these kills. No, they are just like, okay, we have the lead, we got the goal, we can do what we can with the objectives here. So Dragon's priority, then it becomes the Baron as soon as they get a really good pickoff right there. Really, really smart and solid stuff coming in from Boom. But of course, Mad Dogs, we've seen them do really, really well time and time again, but they just couldn't hold up with the pace that uh, Boom was putting up with. Yeah, just super, super aggressive early on. Their picks just worked wonders for them, especially just Platypus, as we said, getting the early ganks. But let us take a look at the stats here. Vi Britannia going to be the MVP. He played amazing. 8 1 and 4 toughs. Didn't die a single time, didn't get a single kill right there, but was just super, super effective in creating a lot of pressure in this map. The SVP does go to Xena. He was trying his best, but as we saw, only two kills on the entire team from Mad Dogs not able to get anything going right there so only getting one on Chalice and only getting one on Vi Britannia but again that's not enough you need to be able to just get the objectives right there as you said boom they got they were just aiming for the objectives and the kills were just byproducts yeah they're just byproducts at that, at that point because they were just really really trying to focus in and the, most of the, and the most of the damage does go to Platypus but as you said it's even everyone is really putting in the work yeah, so the way they play it, again, they, they're, they're, the coordination from everybody when they're going for these kills, they're like, we need this kill to get this thing. It's not like we get this thing, we get a kill, okay, happy, no. They, they, they make the gap there and then they capitalize off of it. So it was very, very crucial the way they play it. So really, really awesome stuff coming in from Boom. But Mad Dogs, they're going to have some time to adapt, you know? They, again, in the drafts from either team, they weren't bad at all. The most... The, the the biggest like question mark maybe would have been the Sona, but that wasn't a bad pick at all. It didn't make sense and they did play it very, very well. But with uh, Rengar in the picture right there, even though that Sona was with Yanagi, there was just no protection fast enough. He wasn't able to put the damage fast enough to stop the explosion that was Rengar hunting you down with the ult. You just saw like after the ult, bam, half elf, then another follow up. And then it was just Chalice going one in Kithian Rain and then followed by an auto attack, done. There's nothing else they could have done right there. And that happened right in front of Yanagi. Yanagi walks away with almost full health and just has to run. Cannot yeah. handle it. Just very, very difficult for Sona, especially to deal with assassins like Rengar here. Because she doesn't really have that much peel besides the ultimate. Mm -hmm. And she's not able to survive long enough. Like That's why enchanters like Janna is more effective in that situation. So let us take a look at the match highlights here let's take a look at the replays of this amazing amazing dominating game from boom as they already just secured the first blood so quickly onto yanagi and here it's like a question why was chalice there he was actually trying to get a kill onto yanagi la. Ah, uh, yanagi okay. was running away chalice hey man where you go man he's just gonna run oh, yeah. in look at him just going so deep really wanting to get the kill as 
there is going to be a reply coming from Jarvan here, able to just take her down. But of course, Boom are still quite ahead. And here, after this fight, even after getting stolen, getting those two kills are way, 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 way more worth it than the Ocean Dragon. And the Soda Ultimate, just not doing enough. It's not able to stop them. Tough still alive with the sliver of HP. They try to run away, but Chal is so aggressive with the ultimate. Just gets in it and gets the kills as well. Here, unfortunate flash from Platypus, but here, it doesn't matter. The oh nice 5-man ultimate, but not enough to save Yanagi's life. Yeah, and look at over there. That's actually a really, really good tactical sweep coming in right there, but the support coming in for the rest of the team, and then Puffs is on the other side. He pulls away the Jarvan from the alt right there. Manages to get the stacks, but not going to be able to finish them off. But they managed to protect Chalice right there, but Platypus is on really low health. And this top tower right here, look at the efficiency coming in right there. They come from the back, they immediately take away the Sona. So down goes the sustain or any sort of CC that they really, really needed. And the rest of the team is forced to run. Jarvan not going to be able to escape in time. The Akiti Ring going to be able to finish them off. And look at the back. There is Zena, of course, going to be hunted down right there, going to get killed off by, by the Rengar, and the rest of the team just follows up, and Jenna actually takes the kill onto Yanagi right there. And immediately after that, they go for this Baron, and they try to spot out Jade, but Jade not mm. going to be close enough here, and look at the damage coming from Vibritana. Here, we have a two-man rotation, a three-man is going to include Zena trying to kill Tusk, but just not enough. They don't have the follow-up, and boom, is able to get his Inferno here. They're going to... Also comfortable, Tufts is just being super, super aggressive. Look at that, a protobell into the decimate. And Yanagi with just one hit from Vibe Britannia just takes him down. And now, boom, I'm just going to be able to take down pretty much the entire game here. Plant dogs are just way too behind. They are down almost around 18, 20,000 gold here as you're just able to just get the nexus super super freely. Platypus just being uh, annoying, just gets the gold card and hits it onto Xena <laughs> for the side of Boom to be able to win that game there. Yeah, so that is game one of round one. Again, this is going to be a best of three. So we have to see which teams are going to be getting the two, zero, the, the two points right there. You need two wins to take the first round. So Mad Dogs, they have time to adapt. And uh, usually as things goes, uh, the team that lost the previous round is going to be able to pick which side. But if I'm not mistaken, Mad Dogs, they did play on the blue side already and Boom was already on the red. And most teams, when they, lose, uh, when they get to two sides, they often opt to go for the blue. So Mad Dogs, they probably still want to get that first pick. They did get the Camille first pick. That was pretty interesting. To, that was really, really good to see. But maybe a switch up of the bands, maybe they want to get Ziggs instead or something like that just to be able to sort of counter the pushes and the objective. No, but Boom was the on one that banned out Ziggs. Yeah, but Boom was the one that Boom banned out Ziggs, Ziggs and Gragas from the second pick. So even getting the Ziggs, it's very, very difficult. They did choose to ban out the Gallo, which I do think, again, it wasn't really the draft. Uh, the only thing yeah. that they could, could have changed is find some ways to get some backline control, especially against Rengar, that they opted True. to put, choose Sona against Rengar and that's not going to be that effective especially mm. like even a Lulu could be better uh -huh. even a Brown could be better as well uh -huh. like even a Rakan has some ways to get into the back to just hold the back line and protect Yanagi here so Sona does not get that job done but with that we are already getting into game 2 here in this round 1 so Boom ID this time are going to be able to have the first pick so Mad Dogs they want to secure their second pick here so they need they want to try to reply what Boom ID will do as Boom ID they have even more options so they don't have to ban the Ziggs actually. So we saw Platypus playing the Ziggs amazing as well. Oh, of course. So let's take a look at what they're going to go for. Again, the Gragas often going to get banned. I don't think we saw him at all. We no, saw we saw him. him once yesterday. I think we, yeah, we saw him once yesterday, but he's usually going to be the very big and important ban right there. Uh, Mad Dogs is going to opt to ban the Diana yet again, but I feel like it's going to be a Camille or Ziggs right here. Yeah, it's going to be the Ziggs. But the last ban from Boom, um, hmm. I think it still might be the Camille. They don't want to give that up if they want to go for something else. No, it's going to be the Rengar, and I think they're going to be picking the Camille for themselves. Yeah, Camille, once again, it's going to be a great, great pick here. And great Rengar band, so they don't want to deal with the backline assessing once again. Especially when they were the ones that were actually picking it for their side here as Boom ID, of course. They are just going to be able to get that Camille very, very nicely, Camille. Uh, Tufts probably just has an insane Camille as well. But Maddox, of course, they can still reply with whatever they want to go for. They can still go for the Janna for themselves. Uh -huh. Janna will be quite decent, especially if they want to deal with just a lot of backline control. Just pushing Camille out of the Hextail Ultimatum or so is still very, very decent as Janna just seems to be quite a, quite a strong champion in this meta right here. But who knows, of course, we're still going to get into the picks. 
very, very soon here as uh, Boom ID, as I said, still a lot of choices to make. Yeah, so it looks like it is, I, I don't think that... Oh, okay, Jungle yeah, yeah, yeah. Camille. Yeah, so Jungle Camille, I do like that because maybe they're going to use... Uh, I don't know if... Does Face Rush work on Camille as well? I think they might just still go Fleet, uh, fleet Footwork right yeah, there. Yeah, Fleet Footwork. Because that makes a lot more sense when you're in the jungle. You're going to be moving a lot more. They're going to be getting a lot more damage right there. But Zena is instead going to pick the Twisted Fate this time. It's so. a deny pick. It's yeah, a deny pick. They, they, they're respecting the fact that the Platypus played really, really well in mid lane right there. And they're, okay, they're, uh, we did see Nami. I think it was from them as well. No, it was from uh, Matt, it was from Mocha. Mocha, yeah, Mocha did play the Nami right there, but Nami still is decent with the alt at least. It's very, very she hard has to a lot. Look. No, she has a lot of CC. Actually. Yeah, yeah, she has, she has quite a lot of CC. Insanely a lot of CC, but of course she isn't that as effective as you would think, especially with her healing. Especially she doesn't really heal that much, but of course here it is gonna feel quite quite good. They really want to get some team fight going, and as I said, as you said before, twist the fate. It's just a denial pick. So Camille Twister Fate, we already saw how, plat how well Platypus played with Twister Fate. You don't want to give them up. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to at all. They're going to be just trying to keep that for themselves. So uh, again, the, the draft looks pretty interesting. Of course, we did see Nami did work out. It's very, very hard to land the first skill, honestly. The bubble, it, it takes a while for it to travel, but it's such a good long CC. And once you get one person in, they're often not dead right there. So going to see how that is going to work out. And it looks like Jay is going to be locking in the Garen, and that's going to be fighting the Fiora right there. So uh, we usually see Darius Fiora quite a bit, but Garen Fiora is also quite typical in this sort of sense right there. So going to see how that is going to turn out. Are we going to see some repose from the Q coming in right there from, from Garen? It's going to be really, really fun to see. Or maybe just, uh, you know, reposting the Damascus Justice in general. We'll just have to see right here. But Yanagi's actually picking off the Kai'Sa. Right there, gonna not want, not does does not want to give that to Boom at all. Yeah, of course, Shinagi is an amazing, amazing Kaisa player here. They do, it does seem very similar to what game plan that Boom was trying to go for with the Kaisa Janna, and of course they're gonna have, uh, they're gonna have the Twister Fate as well from Zena here. But it really comes down to, of course, if the side of um. Yeah, forget to be like, uh, yo, mad dogs. Mad dogs, mad dogs. Ah, mad dogs. Mad dogs. Yeah. See, I goldfish, you know. Sorry, like, guys. See the goldfish, chat well. Ay, uh, Sorry, the chat. <laughs> yes, we are going to be able to get into this game here. So are the side of mad dogs able to bring this to a game three? Or are they just going to fall 2-0 here? Who knows? But let us get into the game. Game two of round one here and this time boom esports are gonna be on the blue team here with a very very spicy draft going for the nami here so uh maybe this could be a trend maybe nami could just be the pick the uh, random pick for the tournament here yeah it's not not necessarily the worst pick to go for in some situations right there but it's definitely out of the ordinary so it looks like it's going to be pretty uh typical uh laning right here of course uh, each jungler getting their health in its respective lanes. Uh, and of course, they're mirroring each other right there, so the red buff is going to go first. So the Vi is going to go straight to the Raptors and try to get that down right now. And Tufts, he, at the early part of the game, no question about it, Fiora's going to be hurting this Garen quite a bit. So already at the level advantage right now, and it's actually staying quite close to his base right here. But Platypus, we've seen him play decently with the Ari right there, so going to see exactly how that is going to work out. But the, the, the fun thing about Nami as a support right there, especially when you have the heal coming in right there, it's also a damaging skill, but the fact that it echoes off onto each uh, champion in the area right there is actually quite annoying to deal with early on in the game, but you just have to worry about the mana in the end of the day. But it looks like they're going to be stacking towards the mid lane as there are three champions over all on there, I'm but it looks man. like nah, they're going to go for the jump. I thought Vi already there might go for Q, might try to get a knock there, but not going to happen right there. Calm, calm down, man. They're not going <laughs> to go for that Q like that. The Platypus is quite near to the turret, but it looks like Mantos, they just really want to secure this top side and really try to stop Britannia from getting this free blue buff, so he's gonna get oh taken no. away. And Tav's gonna bring J1 to help and get the first blood solo kill. But Hello. look who is there. Vi is gonna be charging up, gets the stun, gets the knock up. They're repose, just delaying the inevitable. So it's gonna be a one for one trade. But in the meantime, boom, they took the opportunity. Hey, you took my blue buff. I didn't take your blue buff, lah. So they went to the bottom side here. So not a big deal for the blue buff to be taken, but still, Mad Dogs able to return. Quite, quite nasty towards the top side there. So not giving up anything pretty much here. 
Yeah, so they're evening things out quite a bit right here. And in fact, Night Dogs, they... Okay, never mind. I, speak, I spoke too early right there. They clear out the way fast enough and they even out the gold. Of course, the gold lead, they will jump around quite a bit in this early part of the game. Again, it's really before the first dragon coming up. But the Cloud Dragon is going to be the first one popping up right now. So going to be interesting to see how that's going to go. But already, we saw that it was Tufts that got that first kill. Already going to be finishing off the Sheen, working towards the Triforce right there. So going to be very happy to see how that is going to turn out right now. Yeah, not just that, he is one level up against Jay. So Jay will not be having a fun, fun time here. As now Mad Dogs, of course, they are uh, just still trying to keep up with the gold, trying to be quite strong. The bubble is going to land, but not going to be able to get a kill for their side right there. So Mad Dogs, of course, they are going to try to make some rotation towards the bottom side as we do see Vi here. Going to be waiting around. He does get the charge on to challenge with the assault and battery. He immediately takes her down. And Zena is here with the teleport as well. A great rotation from Mad Dogs to get that kill right there. As Platypus is a little bit too far away. They have to just back off here as Vibritana tries to just clear off the minion wave. Let's taxi a little bit. But again, great, great kill from Mad Dogs. Yeah, really good coordination coming in from Mad Dogs with that bot push right there. They're going to be able to get a bit more priority into the lane. Of course, it's going to be about maybe 40 seconds until the... Oh, I'm sorry, 30 seconds until the Cloud Dragon is going to pop up right here on the 4-minute mark. So, going to be looking to get that right there. So, the rest of the team, they are going to be rotating off towards the bot lane very soon to try and get priority onto this dragon. It is going to be a very essential dragon for these teams to take right here. But instead, I think they're going to be giving this up. There's four people over on the top lane trying to take out Tufts right there. And look at that the rest of the team they're up here and it they might just get a be, turret. They, they're gonna go for the turret they're gonna go for the first uh first turret gold here but it is really early in the game so that protection is up there it's gonna take a lot of effort to try and take this down but okay now it's gonna be over and done with and then and now the tower will finally go down but it's only gonna be two people over into the dragon tent right there and they're gonna be able to take this dragon nice and comfortable so yeah the communication here is like, okay they're gonna go for the first tower gold we want to take this dragon instead then because again very important dragon is quite essential right here but it looks like they're just keeping up the onslaught right here but coming in from the flank the bubble will land onto the Janna that is going to be a near death the but no redemption. the redemption is going to be able to heal them up right away and I think that was also a heal used up just to protect the Janna right there so they don't walk away with a kill and Mad Dogs is really good at denying them any of these kills right here but the objectives they are going to be losing this out right now as the first tower goal does go to Mad Dogs right here yeah Mad Dogs of course great call to actually go for that first turret goal Oh, but look who is at the back, <laughs> Platypus! <laughs> Katana thought he was safe. Nope, Platypus is there to get the assassination. But again, Maddox, as I was saying, their, their rotation was amazing. They really just traded it out. But in the meantime, there is going to be a gank attempt onto Platypus. But he does have the dash away and the flash and with the tsunami. But now, Fire Britannia is going to get the ultimate onto Yanagi. Yanagi is not going to be saved by that. He's going to try to get some damage onto Vi, but Vi just going to be able to escape. She is going to be quite tanky here, but still, Menace are going to be slightly up in the goal. But of course, that goal lead can still easily change with Boom. They do have the Dragon buff. They can still be slightly stronger in terms of just stats. And Tufts, of course, is doing so, so well against Jay. Jay not having a great time, not able to even get great trades, especially against Tufts here as Tufts already completed the Triforce. Jay not completed a full item yet, probably trying to get the Sunfire Ages for the next one and still not going to be able to complete it. So he did go for the Bramble Best to try to deal with Tufts, but Tufts is going to feel quite, quite comfortable, even though the goal is actually evened out because of the first target goal. Yeah, so again, like despite the first target goal going to Mad Dog, they're going to be really, really happy with how things are going so far. But again, they're opting to go for these towers instead of the objectives right here. And it doesn't make sense. They're going to be able to take the Rift Tower for the side of Boom. But losing a top, a bottom tower right now just means that they have more mobility in their jungle right here. So a lot of the territory that they think is going to be safe is not going to be safe. But really good response coming in from Boom right there. They know that the rest of the team, they still want to try and take the bot tower. They drop the rest tarot down at mid and they're probably going to be able to take down two towers with Shelly in the back right there so the rest of the team they're just trying to run in right now and I don't think they're going to be able to come in in time as all that's left is this Garen trying to protect it right there so two towers down in response to that bot push right there so quickly equalizing things but out right there but, going. Oh, but getting caught around the back right here the rest of the team does have to come in the bot, the ult coming in the Fiora is going to just go down but the sustain coming in from Jenna with the ult going to be able to save the rest of them so 
so they're gonna just disengage right now. But it looked really good for Mad Dogs for that engage, but really, really smart. They did not want to commit because the longer they stay, the more damage that Tufts could put onto them. So really, really good call. And Shelly was alive that whole time, actually. It was almost gonna go over to the inhibitor tower right there. Yeah, Mad Dogs, they were trying to trade it off for the bottom tower. They do get a semi-even trade, but boom, able to get the rift, able to get the dragon, and now evening up in the turrets. That gold lead is no more. It's now pretty much dead even at this point and boom of course they're replying back very very smartly they know they're going for the tire okay we get the reef we're gonna get even more tires so getting almost full control towards the mid side losing both all the tier twos and this bottom side they did lose their tier two right there but of course they can easily trade it right back with the tier one in the bottom side and actually get the turret lead in boom's favor right here so mandos of course they did go for i mean they were trying to calculate the risk they were giving up the cloud they were giving up the reef but at this point I, in the long run, I don't know whether that's going to be worth it because they're not getting a significant lead from these rotations right here as boom. They're still going to be happy with that. There's no problem. They can easily, easily just get it and get in position as well for this next dragon. Yeah, I think they're just hoping that they won't have to scale against them. So they're trying to get these objectives, trying to bring it to a game end much faster right now. But the longer this game goes, it's definitely going to be a boom favorite and it's a fight breakdown into the pit right there. The bubble does line on the three, going to be able to take out Yanagi in the back right there. It is going to be the Fiora that does the damage, but the Damascene Justice goes, does go down. But no kill right there, really, really low on health onto Tops is going to be able to run away. And the rest of the team, I think they're going to be able to take this dragon pretty much easily right here. But the rest of the team, they are trying to look for a re-engage right here, but it might be really, really tough as the rest of the team. They are doing a really good job at hiding all these skill shots right there and the defensive bubble does go down but a dragon and a kill in their favor and it looks like it will be of course by Britannia actually going in just checking is like you still guys you still want to come in here not on my watch so he's actually going to be able to take away their own blue sentinel away from their side and mad dogs just losing out the fact losing two people just to try to get this mountain dragon here it's not going to be worth it and already look at this boom are now going to be in the gold lead here they secure even more Turrets, they get the extra two kills. They're gonna feel so, so happy. And Mandox, their plan is not paying off. They're not getting the map control they want. They're not getting the pressure that they need to pull on to Boom. Because Boom is playing, taking it so, so calm. They already know, all right, no problem at all. We can easily, easily give you what you want here. As now, they are gonna feel super, super comfortable getting into the mid game. One more team fight. And Mad Dogs, they, if they lose the next one, they're gonna definitely lose the Baron here. So, because we saw how early Boom were able to take the Baron in the last game here, doing so so at Tufts. Again, it's gonna be able to put on so much pressure into every side of the map. And Jay, he cannot fight this all alone. He's trying to bait it out towards Xena here. Xena is gonna be there with the go card. The repulse is there, gets the healing, but Tufts does get punished right there. So, a little bit too aggressive, but in the meantime, Boom are going to be looking to try to get some map control towards the top side here. Yeah, so again, I, I, I get what Bad Dogs was doing in the beginning earlier on getting these objective trades with towers instead because if they did get that momentum, they were able to take an inhibitor tower per se, that would have been really, really good and they could have been ended the game a little bit earlier than most. But it looks like, oh my goodness, the Hexite Ultimatum is going to go down, but it gets the prop onto the Zonias right there and it looks like it was going to be a focus pick onto Yanagi, but all the skill shots coming in right now, they are trying to get the slowdown. The bubble does land onto two right there and now they're getting the rest of the members really, really low, but look who's actually on position. Charles is only going to be able to jump in right now and the rest of the team, they are retreating, but the damage is too much. Jenna is going to get knocked down right away and they're forcing the rest of the team to retreat and they're doing such a good job to peel for Charles right now as all the damage coming in right there, he's pretty much at full health and he can still run in and pick these fights and the charm is going to land, going to be able to take out Jay and really, really good work just making sure that Charles, when he is in, he is getting those free shots and making sure that the rest of the team are not able to touch them right there. So really uh, close call coming in for Tusk as he re engaged but really, really good control and kiting coming in for the rest of the team to make way for Charles into that fight. And by Britannia didn't even get taken down that entire fight. So now they're going to just siege up onto the Baron here as Tusk is going to be quite low. So it's to be very, very careful. By Britannia, it's going to... Uh... Uh, what? I don't know if that was a flash or what, but he's going to try to go in as he's just trying to hit the Baron. The Baron's so low and the blue team not going to get it stolen. They're going to immediately hex the ultimate onto Dempsey. He is a lot of sustain coming from the side of Mad Dogs and they take down two. So quickly, make that tree right now as Yanagi has to just run away. Boom, once again, off of one great team fight, able to just get this Baron and snowball it into probably the in hit once again. This is the game one story again and again. And only Yanagi and Jay left alive to try to defend this in-hip turret here. 
So yeah, really good sustain coming in with the Nami. Of course, was able to keep them high and uh, healthy right there. Uh, the bubble and the Tsunami did miss, but it was a really, really good call coming in from the rest of the team to re-engage and just follow up. Got a lot of the kills right there. And <laughs> that was a bit greedy, but okay, got the red buff right there and actually making Jay regret a lot of his actions right now as he gets almost knocked to half health and they're going to be able to disengage. But no, they want to go for the chance to charm those lands. It was a great charm onto the Twisted Fate. So Zena is immediately deleted for that extension right there. The rest of the team hiding behind the Baron Pit, not going to be able to go and has to walk around to try and get there. But the rest of the team, they have this Baron buff and they're going to be able to push all these lanes in. And these inhibitor towers, they're not going to be standing for very much longer as the rest of the team coordinate a very good push and it's probably going to be the end of these towers right now. Yeah, it's going to be just so difficult for Maddox to defend it. Xena tried to go for a cheeky cheeky teleport but got punished immediately and Cloud's going to deal a lot of damage to Jay. But of course, we saw the last time Jay can easily just trade it out for that kill. So Cloud's going to be securing the bottom turret. They're going to be getting this mid turret as well as it's going to be three people towards the mid side with the Baron buff minions. Maddox really want to defend this but they can't do anything about it. Vi tries to go in with the charge. They're going to deal some damage but just not able to just get any engagement. And now Maddox so just to watch as their base is just gonna get taken down one by one. The bubble doesn't land, but Jay is gonna take a lot of damage. And that charm does land though. Yanagi gonna get deleted. And the Hex Ultimatum going to land with the tsunami. Bye does not have anywhere to go. As both are looking to be able to take this game once again. Yeah, and down goes the Nexus right there. The Charm actually lands, almost gets the kill onto the Janna right there. And boom, again, they had a shaky start, but they were able to just take control of the game yet again and win the game too. So boom, takes it in round one, 2-0 over Mad Dogs. Amazing, amazing game once again. Just so dominant. Even when you did see Maddox, they were switching up the strategy. They were really focusing on the turrets early on, but at the end of the day, it did not pay off because they were not able to keep the lead boom, but just still one step ahead every single time. They got so much value off of that Rift Herald, able to get tier 2s right there. So let's take a look at the stats. Let us see what's happening right now. So Platypus is going to be the MVP, 6 kills, 0 deaths, 6 assists on that side. And the MVP is going to go to the Vi of the other team. And uh, again, like we did see Executioner's Culling coming out first, but not going to be able to finish as much out. So Sunfire Agents is going to get completed, and it looks like it was going to go for the uh, Sterix Gauge, maybe, just to try and get the Hard Hitter uh, perk right there, but not going to be able to finish that off. Meanwhile, I do feel like Viper Tarnia, the the Camille wasn't the start of the show, Per se. In fact, we saw some more CCs coming in from Demski. Look at that. 10 assists coming in from that side. 10 assists. Demski played amazing in this game. And we can even see from the damage, Platypus just played so, so well. He's just on a roll. This entire, entire set just constantly getting the nice charm. Xena really tried his best, but again, once again, just Maddox not able to capitalize on whatever lead that they got. Even that slight lead, we've seen teams like Boom with a 1k lead, they bring it to 3k, 4k, 5k, and 1 million is gone. Yeah, they, they were able to really take it back from them. So very, very good stuff. Of course, Boom, we do mention again, they are the ones that are going to be moving on into the top 16 right there. So round two, they're going to be able to be part of it right there. So Mad Dog, sadly, they're going to be eliminated from the tournament right there with that 2 Zero. So really, really sad about that. Again, they're they're in the chat. They're a very, very friendly team, and we hope to see even more of them again. And I I don't understand why Chef is pointing everywhere. What's up? No, I'm pointing to my name, you know, uh -oh. to me, and it's not name to you. Ah, uh, it's you. Uh. And it's correct, correct. Ah, uh, so let us take a look at the replays here as we get into the amazing, amazing segue. As I don't know how to segue that into this replay, so we can see already here. Tubbs getting an easy, easy solo kill. On to Jay, but gets traded out. So Maddox, they were still making the great rotations in the early game. They had an idea of what they wanted to do. But here, we do see uh, Vi going for a gang on to Chalice. And they do get a quick gank as well. With the rotations coming from Xena, able to have a 3-1 lead on to the early game. But here, <laughs> Platypus just gets the snipe on to the side of Katana. But here, this is an attempt onto Platypus. Platypus has the dash. He has all the ways to get away. The tsunami is even going to be used. And Vibritania comes in 
with the Hexter Ultimatum. Yanagi has nowhere to go as they do get taken down here. And here, the second dragon left. They're trying to contest it here. They, were one, they just used so many abilities, not able to even get a single kill. Look at how low they were. But Tufts here being a little bit too aggressive, he gets taken down. Yeah, so he's actually going to be taken down right here with the help of everybody right there. I think the Messenger just is going to be able to finish him off right there. So the rest of the team, they're focusing a lot to try to take it down. And this was actually a good call. He did see Zeno was out and alone right there. Tries to go for the pickoff right there with the uh, Hesla Ultimatum. Was not going to be able to do it right there. Actually gets stunned before the grapple hook can go down. But look at how far they push Zeno down. And the sustain coming in from Janna does go up. The rest of the team push in, and Charles is only going to be able to push in right there. So they're going to be able to get in a lot of damage, and he's still at a roughly full health. And look at how far the rest of the team is forced away in this position. Not going to be able to stay in the fight. And Ooh. there was a the beautiful charm going to be finishing off uh, the Garen yet again. Yeah, boom. They were looking so, so good here. And here for this Baron fight, Mandos were trying to go for the steal, but they just get wiped out here. The ultimatum comes on. They get one, they try to look for Senna. Senna gets taken down. Yanagi, the only one left alive. And here, this TP, uh, super, super questionable. They're all full HP, they don't have vision, and they still went for it. But here, Boom was just able to just wipe them, go for the base, go for the Nexus. This charm was just insult to injury at this point. Whereas they do, eh, drama, lah. Drama, drama. That's why you need to get good mass, you know. Ayo. Get the, get the Kakashi one next time, you know. Kakashi, yeah. Uh, oh, Lakashi like this. I, I did say so. <laughs> yes, but of course that is gonna be the end no, of. No, this. Yeah, I thought the I, I thought the yeah. There, there you go. There. You I go. cannot see anything. <laughs> pushing your classes down in general, right there. But uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the very first round of the Summoners Odyssey again uh, today. But we'll be going into round two very very shortly. But only after a short break. So we're taking breaks in between each round to get all our teams ready and make sure they're all prepped to be on the show. So guys, I hope you are still having a lot of fun in the chat right here. Of course, we see Mad Dogs. They did support a little bit earlier. And uh, I think I think someone was mentioning how you, he was happy to see us back again onto the Summoner's Odyssey right there. So let us take a short, short break. When we come back, we'll be on the top 16 here. So do not go anywhere. Do not be a square and be a circle. Anniversaries and birthdays are moments for us to remember and reflect. And there are moments to remember the people who have been with us on the journeys of our lives. These journeys are made what they are by the people who were with us and by the dreams that we shared together. It's great to see our community thrives and flourishes despite the challenges that we face. And as we look at our history, whether it's the eight years that we spent in Malaysia or the 200 years that we had since our inception, I look with great hope to the future. When I first started with Professor Bob Craig, the founding provost, we had no license to operate and no campus. We needed a resilient team who believed in the vision and would be willing to do anything along the way. Some of the amazing founding team remain on this journey till this day. While it's been said that it's not the destination but the journey that's important, I'm so very proud of what we have achieved. I'm always in awe of the passion and the drive that the team has and I'm really glad to be part of it. It has been a pleasure to work with an organisation whose mission, ethos and strategy resonates deeply within me. I couldn't ask for more. What I really like most about the organisation is people here are genuinely caring for the staff and students. As such, I'm proud to be associated with Harriet Ward University in Malaysia. When I first joined Harriet Ward University, I was very excited. 
It was the first time that I got involved in the early stage of operations of a university. It was an invaluable experience and I will always treasure it. Five years ago, I made one of my best decisions in my career by working in Harold Ward University, Malaysia. As a global university, I worked together with global communities and boy, they had color on how I see things in life. Here's to all, to the future. I have joined Heriot Watt University virtually. It's a novel way of joining. Heriot Watt is not a normal university, it's a global team. Heriot Watt University is the right university to study or work at. I'm very grateful for Heriot Watt for helping me to articulate my purpose and allowing me to reach for that work. I'm glad I chose Heriot Watt. The lecturers are always approachable and they're constantly asking you to ask questions. Thank you, Heriot Watt. Happy birthday, Heriot Watt, Malaysia! It's time to make your future. All you scientists, designers, engineers, entrepreneurs and tech innovators, break ground, build bridges, build something we don't have a name for yet. Forget the status quo, forget stereotypes. Go global, change your environment, change the environment. Maybe just leave the world a better place than you found it. Like we have for nearly 200 years, now it's your turn. Be future made at Heriot Watch University. I'm grooving, man. It's hard grooving. I saw you there. I'm hella grooving, man. <laughs> As we are hella getting back into what rest summon as Odyssey. Your name, Dr. Pierce. And your name, Chef. Eh, hey, it's my name, man. As we are gonna get into the top 16 here, but before that, we have to thank all, all who has made this happen here. We have IRL Asia, the organizers of the tournament. We also have our lovely, lovely partners. We have Homie, Scope Solution, and Harry Watt. University. Yes, and of course our sponsors, we do have Sadie's Malaysia and Inch Theory as well to thank for being our sponsors right there. So a lot of love to them. But now we are going to be getting shortly into the second round of the Summoner's Odyssey. The first round, we saw Boom going to be able to take the first round away from Mad Dogs. Mad Dogs, they've been able to make top four and I think they've been able to go all the way towards the grand final. So very, very strong team and Boom, they played very, very well. They had a shaky start into the second round. They, they were able to take the first blood, but they it just... It wasn't even a shaky start. Oh, yeah. it, was, it wasn't the worst start, to be to Because be they, they bounced right back. They, they bounced right back. Yeah, first three kills, like, ah, no problem, man. We, we, we were able this. to get it. We got this, no problem. And they played super, super well, super composed. Mm -hmm. They didn't seem like they panicked at all. They always just had a game plan for what they wanted to do. And they did it very, very well. So, hope great to see them winning their first round once again. And against a strong team as well, Mad Dog. So, Mad Dogs are already going to get eliminated here. But we just in the top 16, man. Still not over. We have four rounds to go. 
Yeah, so four more rounds. Of course, we're only going to be going into round one, two, and three today. And then tomorrow, we will have our semifinals, followed by our grand finals. Our grand finals, of course, will be a best of five. So today, still going to be best of three throughout the entire day today. And we have another round after this one. But we have to, we're, we're going to have to wait and see what other teams have made it into the top 16 right here. So 16 teams are going to be left remaining in this round. And I can't wait to see exactly what match we will have to see. And I also can't wait for you guys to help us get to 10,000 follows here. So do not forget to like the page and like the stream as well. We have to get to 10,000 followers to give you more games, more tournaments, and more content. And if you want to support us even more, you can get to support the badge as well, which is right over there. You see, no? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm looking at your name. It's there, it's uh, uh, my down? name there, and then uh, don't hold it. Ah. And oh, okay. we also have some stars ready if you guys want to send us some stars to get the nice nice promo video much love to all who has sent stars so far and if you want to see even more behind the scenes content we have our tiktoks man oh yeah we have a tiktok at IRL Asia here so let us take a look at the brackets let us see who is left for the top 16 yeah so top 16 right here again it is gonna be QWER lah. Okay, yeah, let's just call them QWER. They're gonna be able to take it over, unlighten them. And Archon Alliance and Wild Rose Monarch, they're still fighting it out, so we're gonna see exactly who's gonna come out on top much later. But Panic Time, they're gonna be able to take it over Full Guy Team. Wild Rose Kings does take it over Pillars Revengers. Boom, of course, we saw that last game, they were able to take it over Mad Dog. Looking for sponsors, gonna take it out Shot Glass. And, okay, and, then, and it's gonna be, uh, I think, yeah, Seed is gonna be coming out on top right there alpha pro uh, and daybreak moon they're gonna be fighting it out still gonna have to see exactly which team are gonna be taking it out yet again so gonna have to see the, how that goes yeah and sinak here are just gonna be able to make it to the top 16 they're gonna be up against mocha so mocha yesterday's champion as they are gonna fight up against sinak as next we do have two uh, to, to be determined game so Forza Ultimate they're still playing it out Team Red Star and Furin they're still playing it out we also have Synergy Flash versus Atlas so we don't know the winners yet but we do know Perlas and Silangan have made it to the top 16 and the last two they're still playing it out here so a lot of close games I presume as a lot of these teams of course they are super super strong probably in the game 3 or so I don't know lah so it's gonna be quite quite dicey right there for all these teams to actually make it further into the top 16 so so far this top 16 is looking quite quite stacked already as they are just uh, so many strong teams so many strong names already yeah so that looks like how our top 16 is gonna be looking ripe right now of course we did see that it was gonna be a uh, boom that did sort of a speed run a 2-0 that is gonna be quite quick right here so these are most likely the teams that are taking it 1-1 at least or you know going into that last and final game but we'll just have to see exactly who is gonna be the ones that we're gonna be watching into the next round so gonna have to see how that is gonna turn out of course yeah so as we can see here we are gonna get into the games very very soon so the next game mm -hmm. who is it la? who is it <laughs> we do want to figure out which team exactly is going to be on for us right there so i gotta have to just wait out They're keeping it secret right, yeah, you, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you want to surprise you know i feel like they are but <laughs> i mean it's going to be a surprise for everybody then in general so just gonna have to wait and see but let's just take a look it looks like the bands are getting ready right here so it's gonna oh. be I like the logo. Sina versus yesterday's champion Mocha. They're gonna be playing it up here in the top 16. As right now, the first ban does go to Sina. As they do have the first pick as well. So banning out the Lee Sin. So it looks like for the side of Mocha, they're not gonna be able to get it. And so quickly, the guys are just going through, man. Hey, <laughs> calm down, man. My eyes closing, you know. Whoa. Oh, the first pick, Riven, coming for Sinat. The first Riven they were <laughs> able to see here as Mocha. They are just gonna reply straight away with the Corky and Gragas here. So, first time Mocha are finally gonna be able to get the Gragas for themselves. Yeah, so Gragas finally in the picture right there. Gonna be a, probably a mid lane Gragas used by Durianstein right there. 
<laughs> oh my goodness gracious, but I do like the Kong coming in right now. Rakan with Kaisa is actually quite, quite scary. You're going to have to worry about the knockup in general right there. So going to be very, very interesting to see how that is going to turn out, of course. But Riven, we haven't seen her at all. It was allowed this week that we will have Riven and Irelia right here. But okay, Lo-Fi is going to be using the Renekton. I did like his Renekton from yesterday, so going to be seeing more of that. And Arashi, of course, with the Lee Sen being banned, he's going to be going with his next most comfortable jungler, which will be the Vi right there. Yeah, he has just been so, so aggressive, especially on the jungle right here. And Sinak, they're gonna go for the any mid. So we are gonna be able to see an any mid coming up from Sinak and looking to get the Wukong jungle as well. Their team looks quite scary here. Mocha looks a bit more standard, but Sinak, we're able to finally get a glimpse of Riven for the first time in Wild Rift Summoner's Odyssey as Tobias Fate has one more pick to go going for the brown gonna be having a lot of peel as jenna as well gonna be able to get a lot of disengage for his team so they're, they're thinking you know hey which one lah uh, the choice first, uh, okay huh? personally yeah i was about to say i'd like the brown more because you're gonna be able to shut down the riven shot with the alt right there you're gonna be able to stop the stun coming in from annie annie already has really poor range you're gonna be able to shut that down kaisa and ktn rain you're also gonna be able to stand in front of that so i like the call coming in right here from dubai face uh, dubai's fate although Personally, I do like him playing the Jenna a bit more, but Braum is a better call against the comp coming in from Sinag right there. So really solid stuff coming in from both teams so far, just with the bans and picks just right off the bat. So can't wait to see exactly what these guys will have ready and in store for us when we get into the first game of the second round. Yeah, already in a very, very new and different draft from the side of Sinak coming out, having the Riven, having the Annie. And Rakan, we haven't seen Rakan in such a long time. I love, I always love watching Rakan, man. Oh, He's so, so slick, so stylish coming from Rakan's here. So hopefully we get to see them play a great, great game. Of course, winner of this will go into the top eight. Not winner of this game, winner of this entire set. So we are going to be having a best of three. So first, the two wins will be able to make it into the top eight. So is Mocha going to be able to defend their title today? Who knows? I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I, I want to see exactly how they're going to play this out. Of course, Mocha, we, we, it's fairly unknown to us, you know, but they have been playing, playing so well. They were able to take the game yesterday, and it looks like they're going to be ready to get into the first game of the second round. Again, on the blue side, on the left, we will have Sinak, and on the red side, we will have Mocha. Oh, look at them, where they are at. They're just going to go for the five men towards okay. the mid lane, and it looks like Mocha are just going to be able to escape right there. So luckily, we were able to catch that as Sinak here, just being super, super aggressive, wants to apply a lot of pressure towards the mid lane, and they did force out a lot of back, so, and a lot of flashes as well. AD carry using the flash, Tobias using the heal, and Durian Steed using the flash as well. So a lot of summoners used for this side. This top side, of course, we do know uh, Raven is going to be quite, quite annoying to deal with. As, once a good play is on Riven, it's going to be so, so difficult there. So Mocha, of course, they're not going to be too worried. They didn't lose too much gold from the situation, but losing all the summoners could be quite scary here. Yeah, and of course, it is going to be the Riven that is going to be raising up the first skill right there. Does want to make sure that that Q, it is going to be a source of mobility, a source of damage, and pretty much everything in between right there. So that little bar right there, you do want to take a look out for that because that's going to be really affecting how much damage is going to come out. So in this lane, I feel like the Riven, she's going to be quite annoying to deal with even earlier on right here. So look at that, already chasing down Lofi even though she was getting attacked first and the stun did go down right there. But knowing that the Q is going to be coming up back soon, Lofi, I don't think he's going to be very happy staying around there for very long. Has to go back and take the rebuttal. Oh, look at that. They're actually going for the fight over here. Going to be able to catch out the jungler, but forcing them off position right there. But actually getting the jump onto the Annie right there. Dodging a lot of the skill shots right there. But the first blood does go to uh, the Riven right there. Going to be able to take out Lo-Fi. But the rest of the team, they're still scrambling around the river right here. And they're going to be taking the top scuttler away from the team right here. But with this, they might just try to go for the bottom scuttle right now, knowing that they won't be able to rotate fast enough but it looks like they are going to be trying to go for a double scuttle because they lost the first blood right here yeah double scuttle will be a great great choice especially because in the top side lo-fi not having the best of time against riven here so apex doing a great job getting the first blood a solo kill first blood at that really even forced out the ignite 
from Lo-Fi and it's quite quite close and Mocha are able to secure a double scuttle so the gold lead is still going to be slightly in Sinak's favor but not the end of the world here as Mocha was trying to go for aggressive aggressive plays towards the top side jungle but not going to be oh. not going to be able to get it and Apex is already one level ahead against Lo-Fi so Lo-Fi has to play super super safe here he doesn't want to get caught from Apex, if Apex is able to get even one combo down, as Lofa is gonna get taken oh down here, no. tries to get the stun. Apex is gonna flash in, wanted to get the charge with the ultimate, but will not be able to get it as Lofa is it. gonna be get pushed back here. The <laughs> ultimate is gonna be used to scale Lofa a little bit, but he's gonna be okay. And in the bottom side, Arashi tried to go for a gank onto the bottom side, the dragon lane here, but Echo Bell is gonna be able to dash away. And Durian's team using the body slam, not gonna be able to get it. So Mocha with their ganks this time. Not going to get any space compared to what we've been seeing yesterday. Yeah, so they're actually getting reined in quite a bit from the side of Sinag right there, but they're not finding the gap that they need to be able to take the kills right here for the side of Mocha. But it looks like it's going to be Resident. He is off on the side. Might try to go for the jump and might get the Braum off guard right there. There is going to be the knockup, forces the flash right there, and a lot of damage coming in right now, but they're not going to be able to follow up for the kill. So really, really good reaction right there, but they do use up all the summoners right there just to try and stay alive. And it's going to be less than 30 seconds until the Infernal Dragon pops up, so they do want to get their hands on that they're gonna just try to get an early recall and try to get ready and prime to try and take this very first dragon right now so it looks like Tyrity is a little bit into the top lane right there as we do see it is gonna be Annie taking a lot of damage and Durian's thing he goes for the runes that actually go for more for tankiness right there going for aftershock instead instead of like what we've seen a lot with electrocute so gonna be be a little bit more tanky maybe gonna be very very scary once he gets cc'd or anything like that but we just just have to see exactly how that's going to work out as Durian's team is going to just try to hold down the mid lane and get more priority there. Yeah, and already Mocha are just grouping up. They're just aiming for this dragon here. As Sena, they have, they wanted to push Durian's team back a little bit, but Durian's team looks like he has to go for the recall because he doesn't have enough mana, but he does have the honey fruit to go for actually, so he will be able to join the fight with his abilities. And Aftershock is actually very, very good with Gragas because able to combo it, it's just a lot of burst damage, especially from the Gragas right there. Mocha are going to be starting up the dragon they're gonna try to go and get some damage onto rakan rakan gonna get taken down immediately here and they're gonna take down apex as well a quick quick two kills and Sina, they were not even ready to reply right there but still this dragon it still could be in the hands for Sina to go for the steal they do have vision mocha are just gonna push it back the blast is gonna be used but mocha they're pulling the brakes a little bit they do get the dragon after all and they're gonna get resonate as well and it looks and they're looking for any creative is gonna get taken down and Ether is gonna get taken down as well so Mocha even after losing the first blood they're striking super super strong during the dragon fight here and Durian's team wasn't even there yeah, he wasn't even needed in that fight right there. Tobias Fate, actually so, so good in terms of just positioning right there, was able to put Unbreakable up and just keep a wall to protect the rest of the team. Kaisa was not able to get even a little bit of damage right there, so either was not a big factor at all. The damage was all focused down onto Tobias right there, so really, really solid stuff coming in for that team. They played it so, so well and efficiently right there, so gonna be looking at a nice and healthy gold lead with the Infernal Dragon in their pocket right now and it looks like they're gonna be trying to get a little bit more priority into the top lane as the Rift Herald is gonna be the first one to spawn but Lofi actually right now is already up and online right here he's gonna be able to take a little bit more experience right there and might try to get the level advantage over the Riven right here but no they're gonna get caught out right here AD carry is actually a little bit over in front but a lot of damage going in right there they're gonna have to retreat and they're gonna run away and Arashi is gonna be waiting for them if they do try to come in right now but they're gonna just try to just poke the Rift Herald right here and he's just gonna make a defensive line right now now, just trying to catch anybody trying to make a jump on it and he goes in he's gonna poke the rakan a little bit forces him to try and go back but resonate he's just gonna annoy them with the clone and just try to maybe make them very afraid to engage but during see he's in the picture right now and he's gonna be the bouncer on the cup the uh, casket does go down he does manage to get uh resonate at the back line right there but the stun does go does go down the, the glacial all, fissure. But the, oh my goodness the glacial fissure is gonna land on all of them they're all slowed down as they are on the bottleneck right there and arashi he's gonna be able to take another kill right here he's gonna be able to take the Annie. So three kills right now and they're going to be able to finish off the rest of the team. And all that's left is the Riven in the bot lane right now. So this is going to be a practically free Rift Herald right there after that great, great fight coming in from the side of Mocha. Free Rift Herald with free gift getting four kills right there. There's a triple kill from Arashi. I can't 
I saw, I don't know what to say. Dear. I was trying to figure out the words, you know, <laughs> to actually combine the, the combine the thing, you know. So, but you talk first, lah. <laughs> while well, I really combine my minds, as just Mocha, I'm just playing so so amazing. Right, there's seven thousand gold ahead, able to get a rare peril, free gift, complimentary gift with the four kills and Sina. They are just gonna be so so behind. They look so good from the start, but just not losing that one dragon fight. They're not able to try to fight back in these team fights here. Yeah, they didn't want to give up any of these objectives. They hung around for very long and they were punished at every turn right here. And it looks like Arashi, he is not giving up. I don't know whether he has assault and battery used up right now, but they don't have a tower to hide behind. The rest of the team are going to be able to collapse on them right here. They're going to try to go for the pickup onto the Rakan right there. But no, it is actually going to be the Kaisa that is going to be taken out right there. So either is out of the picture, but the rest of the team, they have formed up. The alt does land down to Tobias Fate is really, really low on health right now. The Rakan alt does go down too, and they're going to be able to chase the rest of the members down right there. So two are going to just be running away and it looks like Durian Singh is a little bit too far to try and protect them right now but Tobias Fate is just trying to hide behind his tower but is not going to be able to reach there in time so really good return kills coming in from c and Durian Steve he tries to go in tries to do a little bit of cleanup but it's not going to be able to do it the Ignite does go, is going to be able to take out the Rakondo and Annie is quite low on health so if she does come in to this okay oh yeah, my that's, god. Why, that's why you gotta work out you have to be very very careful on that and he does get the return kill and Arashi he is back from spawn he has a solid battery gonna be able to land on Resonate right there the three stacks will be very, very important right there. And even with the resident team, they're not going to be able to force that right there. And Riven has to run right now. But the, the package does go down and they're chasing him down. The Riven's not going to be able to escape. This is it. He's not going to be able to do anything. The barrier does go down. He does try to use the uh, second skill to get the stun onto two of them, but it's not going to be able to buy enough time. And either he's just, uh, he has no clue what to do here. He, 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 he came to all dead bodies. Just all dead. So such a great reply from Mocha. After they even get taken down, they respond so quickly. They just joined the fight. And Carry even had the package right it just brings them down one by one durian seen able to make that hero play to get those quick two kills before he gets taken down and Sinak now they're gonna lose another dragon mocha the timing is so impeccable they get the wipe and they get the dragon dead. so now nine minutes in they're gonna be almost ten thousand gold ahead and lo-fi in the meantime just been chilling in the top side getting the split push going apex trying to join the fight he's not really able to survive in creation drop brought so low by durian steen and resonate tries to reply here but now arashi is gonna go with the punch he gets so much damage onto resonate resonate has to run away but lo-fi is here able to deal enough damage as apex tries to do the damage with the combos but just not enough and the charm that's land onto Lopai. Lopai is gonna get taken down. So Arashi, they have to back off. It will be a one for one, but still the pressure is gonna be put onto Sinaki. As look at the bottom, AD Carry and Tobias, they are just sieging on this tier two. No contest coming from the side of Sinak as right now, not only they try to go, but the turret is already so so low here. There's just way too many things to worry about for the side of Sinak here. Yeah, and they're really, really keeping them dancing across the map right now. As Arashi is even putting more pressure onto the top lane right there, actually poking out the blue. And the Riven is just like, I see you right there, just trying to stop them. But no, gonna be able to run away. And look at the itemization coming in right now. So already almost at 10k, we do have Lo-Fi gonna be the most well farmed in the side for Mocha right there. 12,000 actually, 11,000 actually, 11, Dr. Fierce. Wow. As we do see Mocha just being so, so far, 3,000 ahead for AD carry compared to Ether. We have 10,000 net worth ahead, 3,000 ahead of Apex as well. They're just way too far as for Mocha. All of their main main carries are, 3, 000, are one item ahead of their counterparts. They do try to get the Frostbite on to Ecobell, but Ecobell is going to be able to dodge it right now. It's going to be the Rift drop towards the mid lane. It is going to be just a timer running out, but Sina, they are so worried about the Baron attempt here as Mocha can easily take it anytime that they want. So now, they're going to try to put some pressure with the Rift Herald, able to just start up the Baron as it uh, looks like Resident is going to be trying to go for the defense here with the contest, but the Baron's already dropping down to half HP. Sinak, they might just be a little bit too late here as Arashi is charging up the punch. They're just going to be able to finish the Baron. They're going to try to contest it, try to go for the steal. They won't be able to get it. Apex will not land the skills and the Glacier Fisher does land on the two. They're able to take down Ethan, able to take down Creation and they're going to get four kills right there. The only one left alive is Resonate. They only have to use Tobias for your Arashi she will not catch out Resonate right there. Smoker with the Baron buff are just gonna be able to siege all these turrets right here. Not just that, now bringing it up to a 50,000 gold here. 
Some really impressive stuff coming in from Mocha. They just not only take out the Baron so fast, they were able to decimate the team at a really, really fast pace. And now look at that. They're not gonna be they're not gonna be able to protect their inhibitor tower right there as they all just respawn only now. And the Baron buff is still alive, so they're gonna be able to maybe take down another inhibitor tower, but they're actually hanging around too long close to the base right there. AD carry actually has to watch out, gonna have to use the Valkyrie to just try and get away right there. So gonna be able to pull out just in time. Meanwhile, doing this thing, he's gonna be able to try and get a lot of priority into the bottom lane right now just trying to push out and just make sure that they won't be able to push it in because all that's left right now outside their inhibitor towers is just the bot lane tower and we have about less than 20 seconds now until the next dragon is going to come up and it's going to be ocean dragon it's not the most important dragon but any they need to take at least something right here away from mocha right now because they're going to be able to steamroll them at this point yeah mocha looking like they want to steamroll them as well to the mid to the bottom side here it's creating so much control ad carry look at his position is just super super aggressive as he's just going to get some damage onto the bottom side so they're already sieging in towards the bottom here as right now they're just gonna take them down right they're already taking down two they make that a full full wipe they're just gonna delete Sinak off the map right there as right now Mocha are just gonna be able to win this map as um, Sinak are just gonna lose in this game one here yeah, so really, really solid stuff coming in from Mocha, taking that first game in really, really strong fashion right there. They're going to be able to take it. So these are our previous champions for yesterday. They really showed us that they are worth it, that they are champions. And it looks like they're going to be able to take the first game without pretty much no contest right there. Just so, so dominant coming from Mocha, even being slightly behind in the early game. Just that one dragon fight was all they need and they were able to just snowball the lead amazingly for Mocha as let us take a look at the stats here let us see what's happening we do see the MVP does go to Arashi didn't die a single Ooh. time 9-0 and 9 plate incredible that game and the SVP does go to Echo Bell tried to do something but just not able to, for the team the team is just not able to get any follows that Resident does have the most skills but just not enough for the side of Sinak to be able to capitalize on anything yeah, so re that's actually really, really good coordination coming in from every individual push coming in. Or actually, it was had some really good positioning as well, was able to take a lot of those kills. But every time he was trying to go in with Assault and Battery right there, he was either trying to make a, a you know distraction or just like a really big play for the rest of the team to try and focus on. And they were taking other objectives right there. So really, really good stuff overall coming in from the rest of the team. AD Carry is actually going to be doing the most damage in the team, but that is granted because it is a quirky, of course. But look at how even it is with, amongst the four right there. Durian yeah. Steve, 19. 1000 damage is played so so well this game is there so much but Arashi a well deserved MVP 18 kill participation he was in every single fight dealt so much damage he was tanking the most damage for his team as well as really enough creation was just eating up all the damage he's just getting taken down so pretty much every single fight here so well played to the side of Mocha for taking that game one very very convincingly but they still need one more game to go to make it in two the top eight here yeah so we are going to be seeing at least another round but before we get into that let's take a look at the replays of game one of round two right here so let's take a look exactly at how well mocha was able to take it away from them yeah mocha they are just going to be able to win this fight so so well taking down two so immediately and Sinak going to be just trying to just get the steal but just not able to get it going as they lose four three members here right after that as the members that were alive at that point so right now they are trying to contest it for this riff herald i was stumbling my words here because i didn't know what to say but i was gonna say that arashi did a great job at converting from the glacier he's just able to clean up gets a nice nice triple kill right there not able to get the fourth as resonate is gonna get taken down by ad carry towards the riff herald and mocha are just gonna be able to get all these objectives so so freely and here just no chance for Sinak, almost no chance here, but I mean Mocha was just a little bit too far forward, they got caught out and they are going to get taken down, they're going to lose two here I believe. Yeah, so they were a little bit invested into trying to get the kill onto even more right there, but during this whole time they are going to be able to return the fight, so it looked like they were on the back foot right here as they were getting into this next fight. 
But look how fast Arashi goes in right there. So the rest of the team, they are down. They just respawned and Arashi's already making the beeline to help Durin's team right there, knowing that they're really, really low and they really tried to go for the kill. So he buys enough time. The rest of the team, they're like, ah, we're going to be okay. Assault Battery does go down. He does delay a lot right there and he's getting the rest of the team to try and form up and get into the fight right there. And it's going to be way too late to realize, wait, this is going to be a mistake right here. And the Riven gets caught out and look at the Kaisa. He's just like, wait, the fight is still going? Uh... Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and Mocha with that 10,000 goalie, Arashi just so, so aggressive here. Just played, he didn't die a single time. Able to just take down Resonate here and not even needing to lose his life. Lofa is a little too far he gets chummed up, he gets bursted down, but Mocha are just gonna lose that. But here immediately they go for the Baron, they try to go for the Steel Apex who's in the pit, but this Glacier Fissure once again just buying so much time and Lofi just Killing the backline one by one by one. Resident, the only one left alive there as Mocha. Are just going to be able to clean up bottom here. Ace and they just pretty much end the game at this point. Yeah, so they had the Baron buff, they had everything they need, and even here we just see Lo-Fi, they are just going to be able to hit the Nexus right away, so able to take that game very, very convincingly, of course, but see now, they, dropped, they brought the first uh, bit of the game a bit longer than most, you know, they, they delayed it quite a bit and they were playing it safe, but Mocha found their ground, found the opportunity to get in, and they took it and they were very, very good, so... They, hopefully we get to see a little bit of an adaption coming in from Sinag, of course. So they might not just try to want to play defensively and just hold on to whatever they have early on into the game. Maybe they, they want to change up the game plan, of course. But the drafts, they weren't bad at all when we got in the first game. Yeah, I mean, just they were denying a lot of the early ganks, especially coming from the side of Arashi. And Resonate was actually being quite aggressive as well. Taking, they got three early kills in the meantime but again not able to capitalize on all those skills this one dragon fight the early dragon fight was all it took mm -hmm. for mocha to just take over the game they were just super super ahead they just got so many kills so many so much gold and they're trying to go for a risky 50 50 mm -hmm. and it did not pay off in the side of Sinat right there so again it is really really down to how they execute this dragon fight. It's, the sense where the setups are always super, super important. You have to be ready for any sort of situation. And if you get picked off, you're just giving up more kills and then just trying to go for a steal, it's not going to work out in the long run. Yeah, so again, that is going to be the end of the first game of the second round. This is, of course, going to be the best of three. Both teams are going to be able to adapt right here. So we're gonna, probably going to see the same bands, honestly. They're, they They weren't bad at all. Uh, maybe we might see some respect fans right there. They definitely want to look over to trying to get rid of the Gragas, right? Because that was probably the only shakeup into the picks right there. Giving Durianstein the Gragas might have been a mistake they probably don't want to make yet again. So going to have to keep an eye out on how they are going to do that. So we're going to have to see exactly what the teams have ready as we are getting getting both teams ready and sorted for the next game. Yeah, of course. I mean, Aurelia still left in the pool. They can still go for the area if they want. But already, we're going to get into the ban phase here. So Mocha are going to get... going to go for the Galio. And Sina going to ban Lee Sin and Olaf here. And last ban does go for the Zig. So still leaving Riven Aurelia in the pool. We are already in the pick phase right here. As Camille is going to get picked up by the side of Lo-Fi. So it's going to like be so it. scary. And leading Gragas as well. So Mocha are going to get a scary, scary calm coming from the side. And Sinak here are going to go for the Brown Seraphine. So they want to just get the Seraphine for themselves. Brown Seraphine going to be able to basically be... Uh, what's it called? A I'm force to be the reckoned with? Not a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you know how you... You know you learn chemistry? Uh -huh. And then there's like you, doing the, you do the reaction. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. something you put in the reaction to make the reaction for the catalyst. 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 Ah, see, you know, uh, you do the chemistry. Uh. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I did advanced chemistry. Uh, basically, uh, Brown can be the catalyst for the encore. Yeah. For uh, Seraphine here. But again, Mocha's comp are looking so scary. And this time, they're going to be playing the Gragas jungle here. So, this is going to be quite worrisome. It could be a Gragas jungle. It could be a Camille jungle. Uh, either one would do very, very well. But Sinat are just going to go for the misfortune. Okay, so I like the idea coming in from Sinag. If they get them grouped up nicely, especially if the Encore lands, that's going to be a free bullet time right there. And let's say if Braum lands a really good Glacial Fissure, it could also mean a good combo coming in. Of course, Akali, you're going to have to be watching out for the back line, of course. So, oh my goodness, the Master E coming out right there. It's been ages since we've seen this man. How's he doing? Is he... 
You're, you're, you're really questioning him, huh? You have, it's like you haven't seen him at all. Remember him? I don't want to... I don't want to say it's over. Uh, look. I don't want to say it's over. We've seen, uh, I mean, in your ranked games, of course, uh, Master Yi can go crazy. Too, too many Gold 1 games but, have uh, I seen Master Yi. But, but uh, this is not the pig, man. <laughs> this is not the pig. Oh boy, so we're going to be getting into that very, very shortly. But oh my goodness, it's been so long since we've seen Yi up and about. Of course, playing PC League, I see him quite often. Playing Gold, you see him a lot. Thank God I'm out of there. I don't care about you, man. I, I all think I, I, all I know is it's over. So it's over man. It's over I, I don't want to say it. I usually don't say it. But having this kind of picks, it's not working right, man. Why would you pick Master Yi? Jarvan in the pool, Mukang's in the pools. So many things left in the pools, you know. Uh, it, uh, uh, you know, I just want to see how they're going to pull this off, right? Because again, these, these are this is a very strong team. They're in the round two. So let's see exactly how they're going to pull this off as we get into game number two of round two right here. And of course, on the blue side, we will have Mocha. And on the red side, Sinag is going to be trying to rock this comp that you don't like very much. Yeah, Durancy is going to be able to get his nice, nice Ari right there as we are going to be able to see Lo-Fi on the Camille for the first time in forever. As we do uh, see, oh, it looks no. like it's auto-pick. So Sinak, they are just going to be having uh, some slight difficulties here. So right now, Mocha, of course, I do, like, if we want to count the draft from right now, it does look very, very okay, especially for the side of Mocha to be able to just get this nice nice draft with the Camille, with the Gragas and with with the nice nice Durian Steen Ari as well so a lot of strong pick potential a lot of strong damage as Sinak they do have the side of they do have Ether they do have Apex on the Akali so Ether and Creation having the great great combos is going to be quite scary as well so I bet still Lo-Fi Camille does so so well against Akali that Akali won't really have the best time in this top lane yeah, so you're going to have to worry about Tactical Sweep as the Akali, you're going to have to worry about as soon as you're out of there, you're going to have to worry about the true damage coming in from the first skill. And she's just so mobile that running out of Twilight Shroud is not going to be a problem. So going to be a lot of trouble for the side of Apex right here. Fighting. Oh my goodness gracious, the Ignite! The Ignite, will it be able to be it? Okay, no. Whew! Going to be able to come out of that with Pixels. Pixels of HP! Maybe one Pixel singular coming out right there. Just so, so unfortunate, man. Oh my goodness gracious. So really, really good stuff coming in from Oh, the execute. Oh, wait. Smart, smart, smart. You I just like want to it. get back to base faster, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the faster recall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there. So there we have it. That is going to be the exchange over into the top lane right there. So going to be looking more towards the bot right here. Of course, the misfortune. Haven't seen her quite often, but going to have to be very careful of the combination of the Seraphine, of the alt coming in, the Glacial Fissure with bullet time. That is a very, very scary thing to deal with, but only if they scale up right now. So gonna have to look out for that. But it looks like they're just gonna bully the Akali here right now. So everybody's making a beeline to the top. They just wanna take it out right here. And Akali cannot run in the smoke for too long. The charm will land. Gonna be very, very low. The Ignite does land the flash, but at least left. Gonna be able to take him out. And it looks like it could even be a tower taken up right here. And he carries alone, but he's like, ah, I'm fine. I'm, I've been here before. Gonna be alone for a while right there. Not gonna be too hurt up about this. Yeah, Mocha just gonna be so, so strong. Especially just three, not even three minutes in, it's gonna be quite, quite strong here as Mocha, of course, able to get another kill onto Apex. Apex not having the best time. You're gonna be one level down against Lo Fi. If Lo Fi just gets one hextech ultimatum, Apex will probably get taken down here as Lo Fi is gonna just hit that power spike even earlier than Apex. And again, Mocha are just going to be quite dominant. 3,000 gold ahead. Sanak are not able to fight back. They tried to go in the bottom. Ekoba taking a lot of damage. Has to back up as the Unbreakable is pointed towards the wrong side. As EDK is also level 5 here. So able to even get the ultimate and can easily take down Echo Bell if he wants to. So Mocha, of course, they are still looking very, very good. But if they're able, I mean, to just keep this lead here, especially with the side of Sinak going to be one man down, it is going to be a Mocha going to be quite quite strong as look at Apex he just can't, he has to respect Lo-Fi here 
Yeah, so already at the level lead right there, level six to level five right now. Endurance needs putting on the pain to Seraphine right there, actually diving a little bit into the tower just to get a little bit more damage. And Arashi's just walking by. That's his own town. He's he. He must be happy. He doesn't have to worry about another juggler running into him or anything like that. He's running just right through the river, does not care. And it's like, ooh, I ran out of my blue. Oh, if I wish there was only another blue on my side. Wait, there's going to be a free blue on the other side here. So it, even all these objectives like the dragon and all that, they're going to be taken up pretty easily for the side of Arashi. Sad and unfortunate as it may be, but it's just the way the game goes at this point. Yeah, Mocha, of course, just going to go for the dragon here they know uh, i don't know whether means it up they don't have one member up so mocha are just going to be able to get the dragon pretty much uncontested here as now mocha just looking so so strong but apex actually getting a solo kill onto lo-fi very very unexpected right there as lo-fi had to use both summoners and still gets taken down so a nice pick up from Apex to actually take down Lo-Fi but still it is going to be so so difficult for Sinak to actually get back into this game as they are just going to be able to just get some push Ooh. and the just going to push them back they're just going to get taken down the Monsoon so good pushes Ether back into AD carry as they are just going to get two quick kills and of course right now they're just going to be able to get this turret on the bottom side here as Apex is picking his way there it looks like they did take out creation as well so Deerus is able to get that solo kill but now Sinak are just going to be trying to go for some kills the ultimate doesn't land oh it actually God. gets the double kunai and takes down too but Arashi is there for the trade Apex is showing off his Akali Akali skills right there but in the meantime it looks like he's still trying to go for it they refuse to surrender man they don't want to surrender here as Sina are going to be able to play this out. Mocha, they did secure the top side, looking to secure the bottom side as well. They are just going to be able to get it and back off here. But Sina, they are fighting strong. Apex really doing his best, but still going to be down 8,000 gold. Yeah, so a really, really big leak coming in for the side of Mocha, which is given the nature of this game right here. And it's not going to be even... It's, okay, the Rift Tower is going to just pop up right now, six minute mark right there. Marks his arrival right here into the game now. So going to be looking towards that right here. But first tower, the already two towers actually taken out for the side of Mocha. So they're not in any rush to take this Rift Herald right now. So it might just be Sinak who tries to do it, but they don't have a smite on their side. So I don't know whether they're going to be able to even take it right here. They might just try to contest it as, as most, but they're not going to be able to do so efficiently right here. So the rest of the members, they might catch a Rashi out right here, but the teleport does go down for the side. Lofi is in the picture right there. Does go for the tactical speed and the Hexa ultimate. I'm going to be landing onto the Braum right there. The ult coming in from Gragas. The solo encore not going to be able to do much. And at the back line right there, Duran's team is going to be able to take one out. And all that's left is the Akali in the pit right there. The ult does go down. The moon. I can't believe he managed to steal it right there. He dies though, but he's managed to take it away. Doesn't need a smite, just needs to use his ult right there. And down goes the misfortune. And with that, I think down goes the top tower right now and they might try to push this all the way to the inhibitor right here as two members are still down and out right now yeah already just mocha pen the tree gonna be up 10,000 gold seven minutes in here just so difficult for Sinak to get back to this game but i mean apex is trying his best he was able to get the rear peril but right now the tars is just gonna be siege one by one by one by mocha they're gonna get the bottom one during team trying to get the solo kill onto apex apex is trying to get some kills as much as he can he does have the ignite they are able to secure the bottom side tires so five tires already down in favor of Mocha here, but still, it's just so so difficult. Arashi just deals so much damage as well, and Sinak, they are not really able to just get these fights going. Maybe get a pick off a two, but still, as a whole, just losing the turrets one by one. Now it's already a fourteen thousand gold lead. Yeah, and it's looking very, very tough for Sinak. They don't have any answer to this at all because they don't have that smite left to fight these objectives right here. So going to be really, really unfortunate as it's going to be the Cloud Dragon spawning in less than 20 seconds from now. And they're going to have a lot of trouble right here. Even now, they're going to be able to take this Cloud Dragon pretty much uncontested as they're getting a lot of lane priority into all of this right here. They, of course, still have the Rift Herald in their pocket right now for the side, but they actually really good awareness sees that it's just a misfortune alone at the top 
not going to be able to pick her off right there. So does not have to worry about bullet time at all. And in fact, we haven't seen it just yet. And it looks like the Brahm is going to get picked off. Really good monsoon right there. Getting onto the other side, but Tobias is actually on the wrong side. Getting hit with the towers. It has to wait for the rest of the team to help out to get him out of there. And it looks like that is going to be a pretty much free dragon right now. In fact, I feel like they're just going to hang around. They know that they can deny them right here as it is going to just be Arashi and all that. They're, they're actually looking towards getting the tower and they're actually doing a good job of just making sure everybody's coming out there alive right now. So they're going to be able to push down this mid tower and then maybe go for the dragon right after this. Yeah, just so, so unfortunate. Coming from the side of Sinak, of course, they are just trying and trying their best. And Apex here, gonna be just trying to sneak a kill onto AD carry, but there's just so much, so many members there as they're not really able to get it. As right now, oh they are goodness. just gonna be able to get Deleted. the kill onto Apex. So very, very nicely done. And again, Mocha just gonna be so, so strong. AD carry just peeping in front. He does get rooted though, but he does have the Valkyrie to run away. Durant is able to get it, but he does get taken. Oh, now no. Durant tries to go in. The Glacier Pager is gonna wave as Durant does use. The flash to get away right there. So Sinak still trying to get some kills. They do punish some over aggression. The charm does land onto Echo Bell, but Echo Bell does have to stand behind me to dash away. And the wind the Cloud Dragon disappear because Lo-Fi goes solo the, the Cloud Dragon. Yeah, he's not even the jungler, does not need the smite, just goes in and just gets all the damage on top right there. So going to be able to take that Cloud Dragon relatively free. And it's going to be the Infernal Dragon next as we get into it. And the Baron's coming up in about a, um, a second from now. Going to be up and ready for the teams to take. But just going to have to, oh my goodness, one Q knocks it out at half health. He's just going in, he's so tanky. He's even going to be able to try and take out the Seraphine right there. The Hextile Ultimatum does run out, but already so low on health, the sustain coming in. Janna's actually taking a lot of damage from the Akali right there. The Charm will miss in general, but Lo-Fi sees already back up at half health, gonna be able to take the rest of the members down. And just like that, they take out all the uh, members they can, and all that's left is, of course, Resonate, but he, he, he's not there, lah. He's not there here, of course. Mocha just gonna be running down this Nexus here. No real way for Sinak to go for it. They do take down <laughs> Ita as well in his own fountain, and Mocha are gonna be winning this game here against and not, not just the game they're gonna be winning the set as Mocha is gonna win 2-0 right there 2-0 zero. Zero. so there we have it Mocha coming out of the on top of that round they're gonna be making their way into the top eight of the bracket, so congrats to them. Of course, a little bit unfortunate for Sinag right there as they didn't have their jungler ready yet. I'm sure that's gonna be communicated on and reflected there later, but really, really good stuff coming in from Mocha. Of course, they knew that they had the objectives under their control and they were able to just solidify their lead and really did not have any trouble with that at all. So that ends the second game of round two. Yeah, just so, so unfortunate, but of course, Still fair play to Mocha. They are just still able to win this game. And I mean, the side of Sinak, of course, they didn't want to give up, man. They didn't really want to give up. They really tried their best. They tried their hardest. Especially Apex really played super, super well, but just not enough. Very, very difficult to play in those circumstances right there. And Mocha, they were able to win. So let us take a look at the stats here. Let us see what the MVPs are. It will go to Arashi, as he didn't die a single time. Durastin, I thought he, I thought he died once, but was able to escape. So Arashi, does have the MVP, so much damage, he just went full AP, he don't care, he's just gonna be doing all that and 6 kills as well, it's gonna be quite nice for him. Yeah, and on the other side, of course, Apex, he did very, very good. He was able to go on the back line, was able to get a couple of pickoffs right there, but not gonna be enough. There were one man down there. And of course, Apex, he does deal the most oh. amount of damage. He was very, very tricky to try and pin down right there, but Durianstein, he's actually gonna be dealing the most damage for the side of Mocha. Yeah, and just Durian Steen gonna do so, did so, so well in this game, just being the backline assassin that we've seen Ari just so, so strong. They are actually able to actually just, he's just getting the MVP from 13 assists, 8,000 kills. He didn't even take the most damage, you know. Tobias Payne, low part, the most damage, you know. Yeah. What is this nonsense, man? I don't know, man. That's just how the game goes right there. So, really good stuff to Mocha. They're gonna be really, really happy with that. They're gonna be moving on into the top eight, into round three and and i just hope they're they're gonna be able to carry this momentum they need of course it'd be really really nice to see them try to take the, the even the win of the the championship here if they take the first place but there's still so many strong teams left in the bracket i do want to see how well they fare against them all yeah just still mocha of course they're here to defend their title they're here to defend 
try to get a two-time win in Summoners Odyssey. Not many teams get to do that Not twice in a row. But of course, we have seen a lot of strong teams able to be so, so dominant during this time. So let us take a look at the replays, at the highlights, and let us see what went down that game. Yeah, so here we go, going into the replay. So of course, Lofi getting that early first blood kill onto Apex right there. It did really, really well. Of course, they are going to be able to equalize this uh, really, really quick. But they were just bullying Apex a lot into this lane right here. Look at the charm, going to be able to land a lot of damage going down. And Arashi goes for the flash right there, gets the knock up, and going to be able to finish the job right here. And look at that, even using the Janna ult just to stop them from running into their tower right there, going to be able to get the pickoffs that he needed to finish off the Bot tower now. Yeah, and here Apex. Woo! Look at the nice Kunai getting a quick double kill, gets a killing spree at that, and also they just able to get it. And Durian Steen, what was that, lah? <laughs> I didn't notice that, you know. <laughs> Nonsense, lah, this one Durian Steen. But yeah, uh... I mean, Durian Steen was just getting all the backline kills. He's just going in. Apex tried his best to get the kill onto Arashi, but just not able to get it. He did get the steal he on the rear peril, but he got punished immediately. And Durian Steen able to get the kill onto Ether as well. Here, Lofi just being so, so aggressive. You get the flash, gets the extra ultimatum. Ether just gets deleted off the map as they're gonna siege for more. They're just gonna look for more here. Echo Bell just stuck. Nowhere to run the nice flash monsoon from Tobias' face. He's stuck in the base, but I mean, his team is there to help him, so he's able to get away. Yeah, so really good teamwork right there. They actually stay around just to make sure Tobias can actually get out of the area right there. The Hex Ultimatum does land. They're able to draw out this fight for a very long time, but look how much Tobias Fate has to run from the Akali, forces the all right there. Not going to buy enough time right here, and it is going to be Arashi who comes to the rescue, but a little bit too late to try and save uh, Tobias right there, but going to be able to really delay the rest of the fight, going to be able to get the pickoff on four of them. And there, there was just the Nexus. They're going to be able to wipe that down completely. Yeah, just a quick, quick game. Okay. I was just able to take this game in such a dominant fashion here and they're gonna move on into the top eight so Sinang is gonna be eliminated in today's Warriors Summoners Odyssey but we do have one more round we have one more round to go and that will be the top eight and the winner of any top eight here will go into the top four which will be continuing tomorrow here so anyone in the top four will get the share of the prize pool so with that let us take a short short break and when we come back We'll be back with the top A here, so don't be a square, be a circle. At Harriet Watt University, we're all too aware of the pressures that young people today are facing. The pandemic has certainly added to the usual stresses of being a teenager. The lack of healthy social interaction with friends, disruption of school schedules and working from home are just some of the experiences that can exacerbate the usual exam stress. We also recognise parental expectations of academic performance. Thinking about the next steps after school, the uncertainty of the job market might make it more difficult to work out what are the right university courses to enrol in. And some students might even be thinking about delaying a university education or not pursuing one at all. We recognise that to help young people, parents play an increasingly important supportive role during this time, even if understandably they're suffering uncertainties of their own. This is why Harriet Watt University Malaysia is proud to launch our Start Smart program for parents and for students studying for SPM, STPM, IGCSE and A-level exams. My name is Deborah and I'm Professor of Positive Psychology and Head of the Psychology Department on our Malaysia campus. To design this program, I've worked closely with my colleagues Jasmine Lowe has led the establishment of a number of um, student development programs at foundation and undergraduate level. Su Lin Chung is a practicing positive psychologist with more than 30 years professional coaching experience. Our three week program is carefully designed to prepare students and parents for making positive choices together about the next steps after school. 
Groups are limited to just 10 students, so there's lots of interaction and discussion, as well as personalised support from one of our experienced coaches who will guide you throughout. Our programme offers three workshops framed around discover, dream and design. Our first workshop sets the scene for discovery and interactive uh, activities will promote effective communication between parents and students. Our second workshop gives space to dream. Our coach will guide students to align that dream with what they enjoy doing and what they're good at. Our third workshop designs the next steps to reach that dream. To help, our coach will share some tried and tested study skills and other practical tips. The Start Smart programme we're offering at Heriot Watt University Malaysia is not just unique for Malaysia, but it's unique to the global university sector. Whatever the anxieties, remember this programme is carefully designed by expert psychologists to help students to help themselves. Work with us and together we can turn those negative pressures into positive energy to succeed. To register, please go to our website. The reason I chose Harriet Ward is because of its diverse culture and the eminent faculty present over there. So altogether it was a wonderful experience and I highly recommend you to pursue your studies at Harriet Ward. I chose Harriet Ward to study at because it's a multicultural university with a lot of diverse backgrounds. Having lived in over six countries, I thought it would be a great environment to learn about different cultures, meet new people from different social lives, social backgrounds, which I might have not had the opportunity before. In addition to its global network, which I hoped would allow me to expand my own network and potentially give me a good platform for my future. One of my teachers back in school um, did their master's here and they highly recommended it to me saying like it's one of the best universities in Edinburgh to come to do business with because he knew that I was interested and it was one of my best subjects so he told me to come here for it. I couldn't agree more with his decision because I've loved every moment of being here. So I chose Harry what because of the campus. When you go to the right place, you kind of get that feeling. And I got that feeling when I went to Heriot Watt, especially meeting the people there. They were so passionate about what they do and so welcoming and so open to talking about why they chose to go there, why they like economics. The course at Heriot Watt was very different to the other unis that I had went to because at Heriot Watt, they really focus on the application of the skills that you learn and how you apply that theory to the wider world and how you would use that. Another reason is the industry placement option that Harriet Watt provided because it has a lot of ties with the industry allowing students to choose their profession or choose an experience that they want in whichever field that they would like. This was one of the best decisions that I had while coming from my masters. I have applied to probably over 30 schools across the United Kingdom and the US and I got into almost all of them but a big problem was price and then Harry Watt offered me a fairly low tuition and it was in a different country across the world and I just thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to learn about other people so I thought just getting different insights were like a massive influence on what made me want to come to Harry Watt. One of my favorite things in Heriot Watt University was that it had students from all over the world, which gave me the opportunity to meet new people with different cultures and exchange ideas and opinions for different topics, which involved me as a person.
anniversaries and birthdays are moments for us to remember and reflect. And they are moments to remember the people who have been with us on the journeys of our lives. These journeys are made what they are by the people who were with us and by the dreams that we shared together. It's great to see our community thrives and flourishes despite the challenges that we face. And as we look at our history, whether it's the eight years that we spent in Malaysia or the 200 years that we had since our inception, I look with great hope to the future. When I first started with Professor Bob Craig, the founding provost, we had no license to operate and no campus. We needed a resilient team who believed in the vision and would be willing to do anything along the way. Some of the amazing founding team remain on this journey till this day. While it's been said that it's not the destination but the journey that's important, I'm so very proud of what we have achieved. I'm always in awe of the passion and the drive that the team has and I'm really glad to be part of it. It has been a pleasure to work with an organization whose vision, ethos and strategy resonates deeply within me. I couldn't ask for more. What I really like most about the organization is people here are genuinely caring for the staff and students. As such, I'm proud to be associated with Harriet Ward University in Malaysia. When I first joined Harriet Ward University, I was so very excited. It was the first time that I got involved in the early stage of operations of a university. It was an invaluable experience and I will always treasure it. Five years ago, I made one of my best decisions in my career by working in Harold Ward University, Malaysia. As a global university, I work together with global communities and boy, they had colour on how I see things in life. Here's to all, to the future. I have joined Heriot Watt University virtually. It's a novel way of joining. Heriot Watt is not a normal university, it's a global team. Heriot Watt University is the right university to study or work at. I'm very grateful for Heriot Watt for helping me to articulate my purpose and allowing me to reach for that work. I'm glad I chose Heriot Watt. The lecturers are always approachable and they're constantly asking you to ask questions. Thank you, Heriot Watt. Happy birthday, Heriot Watt, Malaysia! It's time to make your future. All you scientists, designers, engineers, entrepreneurs, and tech innovators, break ground, build bridges, build something we don't have a name for yet. Forget the status quo, forget stereotypes. Go global, change your environment, change the environment. Maybe just leave the world a better place than you found it. Like we have for nearly 200 years, now it's your turn. Be future made at Heriot Watt University. Harriet Watt University were all too aware of the pressures that young people today are facing. The pandemic has certainly added to the usual stresses of being a teenager. 
the lack of healthy social interaction with friends, disruption of school schedules and working from home are just some of the experiences that can exacerbate the usual exam stress. We also recognise parental expectations of academic performance. Thinking about the next steps after school, the uncertainty of the job market might make it more difficult to work out what are the right university courses to enrol in. And some students might even be thinking about delaying a university education or not pursuing one at all. We recognise that to help young people, parents play an increasingly important supportive role during this time, even if understandably they're suffering uncertainties of their own. This is why Heriot Watt University Malaysia is proud to launch our Start Smart programme for parents and for students studying for SPM, STPM, IGCSE and A-level exams. My name is Deborah and I'm Professor of Positive Psychology and Head of the Psychology Department on our Malaysia campus. To design this programme, I've worked closely with my colleagues Jasmine Lowe has led the establishment of a number of um, student development programmes at foundation and undergraduate level. Su Lin Chung is a practising positive psychologist with more than 30 years professional coaching experience. Our three-week programme is carefully designed to prepare students and parents for making positive choices together about the next steps after school. Groups are limited to just 10 students, so there's lots of interaction and discussion, as well as personalised support from one of our experienced coaches who will guide you throughout. Our programme offers three workshops framed around discover, dream and design. Our first workshop sets the scene for discovery and interactive uh, activities will promote effective communication between parents and students. Our second workshop gives space to dream. Our coach will guide students to align that dream with what they enjoy doing and what they're good at. Our third workshop designs the next steps to reach that dream. To help, our coach will share some tried and tested study skills and other practical tips. The Start Smart programme we're offering at Heriot Watt University Malaysia is not just unique for Malaysia, but it's unique to the global university sector. Whatever the anxieties, remember this programme is carefully designed by expert psychologists to help students to help themselves. Work with us and together we can turn those negative pressures into positive energy to succeed. To register, please go to our website. The reason I chose Harriet Ward is because of its diverse culture and the eminent faculty present over there. So altogether it was a wonderful experience and I highly recommend you to pursue your studies at Harriet Ward. I chose Harriet Ward to study at because it's a multicultural university with a lot of diverse backgrounds. Having lived in over six countries, I thought it would be a great environment to learn about different cultures, meet new people from different social lives, social backgrounds, which I might have not had the opportunity before. In addition to its global network, which I hoped would allow me to expand my own network and potentially give me a good platform for my future. One of my teachers back in school um, did their master's here and they highly recommended it to me, saying like it's one of the best universities in Edinburgh to come to do business with. Because he knew I was interested and it was one of my best subjects, so he told me to come here for it. I couldn't agree more with his decision because I've loved every moment of being here. So I chose Harry Watt because of the campus. 
when you go to the right place you kind of get that feeling and I got that feeling when I went to Herrick Watt, especially meeting the people there. They were so passionate about what they do and so welcoming and so open to talking about why they chose to go there, why they like economics. The course at Herrick Watt was very different to the other unis that I had went to because at Herrick Watt, they really focus on the application of the skills that you learn and how you apply that theory to the wider world and how you would use that. Another reason is the industry placement option that Heriot provided because it has a lot of ties with the industry allowing students to choose their profession or choose an experience that they want in whichever field that they would like. This was one of the best decisions that I had while coming from my masters. I have applied to probably over 30 schools across the United Kingdom and the US and I got into almost all of them but a big problem was price and then Harry Watt offered me a fairly low tuition and it was in a different country across the world and I just thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to learn about other people so I thought just getting different insights were like a massive influence on what made me want to come to Harry Watt. One of my favorite things in here at that university was that it had students from all over the world, which gave me the opportunity to meet new people with different cultures and exchange ideas and opinions for different topics, which involved me as a person. Anniversaries and birthdays are moments for us to remember and reflect. And they are moments to remember the people who have been with us on the journeys of our lives. These journeys are made what they are by the people who were with us and by the dreams that we shared together. It's great to see our community thrives and flourishes despite the challenges that we face. And as we look at our history, whether it's the eight years that we spent in Malaysia or the 200 years that we had since our inception, I look with great hope to the future. When I first started with Professor Bob Craig, the founding provost, we had no license to operate and no campus. We needed a resilient team who believed in the vision and would be willing to do anything along the way. Some of the amazing founding team remain on this journey till this day. While it's been said that it's not the destination but the journey that's important, I'm so very proud of what we have achieved. I'm always in awe of the passion and the drive that the team has and I'm really glad to be part of it. It has been a pleasure to work with an organisation whose vision, ethos and strategy resonates deeply within me. I couldn't ask for more. What I really like most about the organisation is people here are genuinely caring for the staff and students. As such, I'm proud to be associated with Harriet Ward University in Malaysia. When I first joined Harriet Ward University, I was very excited. 
It was the first time that I got involved in the early stage of operations of a university. It was an invaluable experience and I will always treasure it. Five years ago, I made one of my best decisions in my career by working in Harold Ward University, Malaysia. As a global university, I worked together with global communities and boy, they had color on how I see things in life. Here's to all, to the future. I have joined Heri Atwat University virtually. It's a novel way of joining. Heri Atwat is not a normal university, it's a global team. Heri Atwat University is the right university to study or work at. I'm very grateful for Heri Atwat for helping me to articulate my purpose and allowing me to reach for that work. I'm glad I chose Heri Atwat. The lecturers are always approachable and they're constantly asking you to ask questions. Thank you, Heri Atwat. Happy birthday, Heri Atwat, Malaysia! It's time to make your future. All you scientists, designers, engineers, entrepreneurs, and tech innovators, break ground, build bridges, build something we don't have a name for yet. Forget the status quo, forget stereotypes. Go global, change your environment, change the environment. Maybe just leave the world a better place than you found it. Like we have for nearly 200 years, now it's your turn. Be future made at Harriet Watt University. Finally, after a little bit of a longer break, so we are back with some more What Riff Summoner's Odyssey here. My name's Shiv. And I'm Dan Wright Pierce. Of course, this tournament is organized by IRL Asia and we are partnered with Homie, Scope Solutions and Harriet Watt University. Not to mention our sponsors, we have Sadies Malaysia and Inch Theory. So big thanks to all of them for helping us and supporting the Summoner's Odyssey. No, my hair is worse, lah. Yo, oh, 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 oh. early curly hairs, you know, going <laughs> everywhere. You know, they need haircut, lah. Well, haircut will be hard to get, lah, nowadays. You know, yeah, need yes. the bookings all. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but of course, we are back from a decently longer break here. But because we don't, we are gonna try to be playing. Aaron, Aaron, you gonna play Aaron here? A long time since we. I don't think I've ever played Aaron with you, honestly. Yeah, lah. I think uh, you know, I think we played before. One time, one time. One time, lah. We played one time. One yeah. time. One time, the sometimes, as we are going to be just uh, weeding it out. Since some teams, of course, they are still playing out their game here. So, uh, we do need to take a little while to maybe just uh, buy some time. As we are going to get into some ARAM here. So, of course, we do have our phones ready. And we're going to be playing against one uh, against each other. I think so, yes. So, of course, um, last time I played you, I'm too strong. Maharaja Aram too strong here. Yeah incredibly strong but I think I so far the score I think has been 1-1 one, one, uh, me and Lionel right because mm. I, I want no but we had three of ARAM games in total didn't we? you were 
One zero. Oh no, ah. I think I played with yeah. You beat Lionel one time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so I one beat one. you already. One zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with you and me, it's one zero, and yeah, you beat me. So this is, I have, I have to win this one. <laughs> to you try have to and win this one. The game three. Uh, of course. It's been a while since we Aram. Uh -huh. Because maybe I don't know meta change or you know all the nonsense coming. Yeah, it's <laughs> Aram, you know, it's serious, serious modes lah. Very serious. Some people only exclusively play Aram, you know. Some people do actually. Yeah, yeah some people here, as we do, are they? Are we? See, Aram mm -hmm. only Aram player here. Ah oh, yeah. <laughs> it's PR uh, as I point to an imaginary person, to, who likes to play Aram here. But we are going to be person? playing it to just buy some time. So. I mean, uh, I know you're excited to lose again. Calm down. Because, uh, hey, compromise. I'm, I'm, I'm too good, man. I'm too good. My team here is going to be too good for you, man. A little too good for you. Okay, if you insist. So, But we are going to be trying to get everybody ready up. I, I don't know whether we'll be accepting uh, people in the lobby to play ARAM as well. Mm, uh, we, are. Like we are. We are, we are. Okay, so. Uh, so I'm going to have the other teams, mm -hmm. and you're going to have the nonsense teams. You're, you're already saying you're winning even before a draft. I know already. I know already. I'm the expert, man. Uh, I'm doing good so. Naram here, lah. If you say so. so. Uh, oh, change size, lah. Oh, sorry, my bad. Oh, yo, this one. Nonsense, lah. I want to be on the left side, cannot. I thought. I thought. Okay, the, my fault. My oh fault. yeah, yeah, correct, lah. Cause you know. Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah. Like that, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. I was thinking, where? Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. So whoever wants to join, we will definitely put the uh, whoever wants to join in the comment here. So not whoever wants to join, <laughs> whoever to add actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain juice gone, really, lah. Uh, so hopefully this will be a bit of a refill. A refill a bit, lah, because we haven't played Aram in a while. Eh? We have some, some familiar names here. Uh huh. The the classic here, of course. Uh, we are going to be able to play some amazing, amazing games of Aram in the meantime. So. Uh, what do you think? Lah? You think you're going to have a better chance today? Yeah? Hopefully, I won't get a champion like uh, Leona again in ARAM. Hey, hey. hey th the first two fights are all random. Alright. It's not so, RNG, man. It's all skill, man. It's all skill here. Lah. Uh, uh, if you say so, alright. Yeah, you're probably right. I am yeah. terrible player with Leona. Nah. nah it's I, all skill, man. It's, uh, even uh, Leona, dude, anyone can make Leona win. True, true, fine, fine. Right, not not uh, discouraging all the one trick Leonas out there, sorry. I know I don't mean to offend you. But of course, we are still waiting on the lobbies to waiting for people to come in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's, it's been a while since we got to play Arabs here. As uh, we're still waiting on, I mean, the next game will be the top eight for the bracket. So it will be the last set that we get to see. But today we throw in a little bit extra. Lah. Yeah. Throw in a little bit extra, show you extra stuff, and be able to be. You know, we're having a nice exhibition. We just have a little fun, you know. A little fun of uh, Dr. Fierce here losing, as of course, 100% my team gonna be able to win. No problem at all. Okay, if you say so. If you say so. You know, you know, this, the more you set yourself up, all the big talk and all this, uh, when you fall, it hurts a lot, you know. Nah. Just saying. Just saying, man. Just saying in general. But of course, guys, uh, just gonna also talk a little bit about the stuff that we have upcoming. You know, we will be going back into Season 2 of the EMVP League, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday will be, of course, the wild cards, where they were going to have 20 teams left over from each of the groups that couldn't quite make the Grand Finals slot. They're going to be fighting for the last slot in the Grand Finals for that full 16 teams to be able to fight in the Grand Finals finals in Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, so of course, this weekend is going to be Action packed with some PUBG mobile action here. As you said, the Wildcats is the last chance mm -hmm. for all these teams, 20 teams in total, to be confirming their slot in the grand final series. So, will, who will come out alive out of 20 teams? Only time can tell. Of course, please tune in on Friday where we'll be streaming every three maps here. So, let us take a look at the video promo for the MVP League.
Okay, are we going to talk about what's happening in the room right now? Oh my goodness gracious, please, please love. Me know little me. shame. Little me know me. Bye bye, Dr. Fierce. Ah, see, you have to be careful. Lah. I'm very scared right now. You have to be careful. So anyone who wants to join, please do drop in your in-game ID or at the ID in the comments right there. So no worries, Tatsu, hashtag QTT, so T-A-S-T-U, hashtag QTT, if you want to join into the lobby. So I do try to bring your slot. So have some fun, man. We can play with us, you know? Even though we're not so special. La. Yeah, unwind a we're little normal, bit. We're normal people, ni la, but you know, <laughs> we want to have fun with the viewers out there as well. So do try to join as we are going to get into Aram. Uh -huh. Aram. Aram. So how, how, a lot of people like pronounce it different. La. Yeah. I say Aram nice. Aram. 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 Uh. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it rolls out the tongue better. Aram, again, like so, um, so English. Yeah, like, uh, like if, if it depends on crowd you hang out with, you get different pronunciations of it. And it's kind of kind of funny right there. But it looks like we are going to get even more players oh. in here already. So, well, wow, look at your side, man. Ho, 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 ho. Throw Mano also got you know. Got He's really it. the Maharaja, you know, I think. Confirm. Maharaja, you know. We are the royals of the Arams here. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't play. Oh, play. Okay, what, okay, even oh more play. coming in, as you can see already. So two more slots. Two Still more waiting on. As we are gonna get into it very, very soon here. Oh diamond players. Oh waiting. Oh, finish D. <laughs> All complete. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be able to start up the game here. So my team. Got um, oh, yo, this name bit uh, inappropriate lah, yo. As now, yes, I'm gonna have Maharaja here la, on this team. So you are gonna just have Doctor Fierce here. So let us go. Uh, yeah, okay. What's happening now? <laughs> oh. oh, oh. Okay, they just wanna move off. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We get it, 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 we get it. I, I did it, I did it already. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, properly, you can know, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, properly, right? oh, I think they're gonna do the little shuffle shuffles. Oh, shuffling. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, make it fair, make it fair. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, eh, properly, uh, yeah. Eh, okay. And then? And then? I go right side. Eh. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know whether they're done shuffling. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I go in now, yeah? Can I go in now? Same with me. <laughs> I can't believe it, it's the same! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, we are gonna get into the game here, so already uh, I'm gonna get some nice picks here la, for my team. Wow, it's over, la. I think it's over. La. Oh my goodness gracious me. Yeah, so, of course this is Aram. It is gonna be 5v5 in a one single lane here as we are gonna get into the game as well. So, what are you picking? La? Shoo! Nonsense for you. <laughs> just, just. So, Dr. Fierce here, of course, he is trying to prepare his best to uh, try not to lose to me. La, because my team is a bit too strong. A bit too strong for you. La, yeah. I even got my, my baby man, man. My baby man. I got something I like too. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this team. I don't know what they're saying. I don't. I don't support what they're saying. And now you won't be able to see it. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, yes, I'm gonna be very, very strong in this game. So we are gonna get load into the game here. The champions have been selected, mm -hmm. and thank to all you guys who have joined today in the Arams here. So, um, any final words on this? Mm. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. <laughs> my, my final words is uh, no mercy. La. No mercy la, for you, Dr. PSC. I'm going to go all out. We all out. As I want to win here. As we are going to be getting this, get into the games here already. So I'm going to be really commentating my own game. I don't know what the hell I'm doing now. But now, uh -huh. let us see. What is that? Hey. Go oh, oh my like logo, it. nice way, damn nice way. Yeah, what's As up? We are gonna get into the games. So, um, yo, Dr. Fierce, where are you la? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if you guys didn't know, I'm playing uh, Garen here. Bye. Say, hey, who's that la? Ah, uh, one for one, I'm big, ow. Ow, 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 don't hurt me. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. I tried to stop you a little bit right there. 
But the recipe will come in, ma B, ma B. As we do see as well, I'm a, I'm a hit, man. Oh, oh no. Oh no, my team. Uh oh. Okay, uh -oh. so right now. Oh my god! What was that? Apprehend? What that do you mean? was uh, insane Are in the membrane. Kidding? And oh my god, Dr. Fierce. What was that? How did that, that grab uh, me? Oh, yeah, not the fierce. Why, uh, why you get taken down like that? Team, let's uh, chill a bit, uh, team. We're what, going to uh, uh, be mean? winning very soon. No need to rush. Uh. No need to rush. I'm uh, very, very strong. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. okay. What? Okay, bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Worth. 100% worth as can't I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I don't know where I went, you know. I, I, I fly I. to a different dimension, you know. <laughs> as oh, right oh, now. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's. Uh, a team without me. Oh my god, Golden Phoenix gets a nice ultimate. Well, dude, he's gonna get traded out here, huh? Sorry, huh? Okay, so. I'll, okay. okay. I'm, good. I'm good. Oh. Okay, there we go. Oh my god, okay. Oh what, my what, god, what? the charm! How? Insane. Oh, okay, boy, I like boy. it. Being insane and I think I have to run away. Lah. Okay, okay. Hello? Uh, not not the other hand, apprehend like that again, okay? okay? Please stay oh, away. Surfing them pin on. AP lah. Okay. <laughs> I like the emotes right now. Emotes? Uh, I suck at emotes. Yeah, so I can emote. Uh, this. Oh, oh. Yes. Oh. I need to be careful not to say bad words here. Right? <laughs> He's getting like, intense a little bit, huh? Getting intense, like, you know. You cannot say uh, unkind words, you know. You're going camp because it's intense. Yes, sir. Sorry, yes. that was lame. I'm not going to say that ever again. What? I didn't even realize what you said. Yeah. No, I said it's getting... It's, it's like camping because we're intense. Oh. You see? <laughs> you still... <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> oh my god. Wow! Dude! Popping off, man! He's popping off. Oh my goodness gracious, what? I had to run. Okay. Got one at least. Oh my god, the encore is good. Wait, your team's actually popping off. Yeah, yeah, and I got. Oh, okay, no, I gotta run by. Wait a minute. Wait a team's minute. Actually popping off. Wait a minute. Oh, never mind. My team's popping off even more. But actually, no, your team's popping off now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Actually, now my, my team is popping off. Oh my god! How? How? Um. Oh my god! Okay, lah. Uh. What? Okay, that, that was, killed, that, was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Hey, I think my team quite strong, eh? Very. I'm like, very angry, you know? <laughs> okay. Let's go for this, see how this goes. Ah. See? Don't run away from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, still a bit dead even lah. Uh, Twelve yeah. to ten, no problems here. We are gonna be see some some things happening right now. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this uh, this quirky a bit scary lah. Uh, the inappropriate name. Yeah, we're not gonna say that out loud. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, the, the, the seraphine. I think I need to. Get, get my stuff together, man. Oh, wait. Okay, how's... I realize your team, right? You go in! Nah. Come! Go in first. You go in. No, you. Uh-oh, oh, ow. Okay, never mind. Wait, then pin me. Thank What's you. Happening? Oh, that was scary. Hello? What's happening right now? I don't know, but... Are you gonna walk in? You wanna come? Yeah. Oh, oh my god! Popping off, baby! Hi, chef! Bye, chef! What? <laughs> A fresh <laughs> encore? Dude! Oh my goodness gracious! Oh my god! These guys are awesome, man! Oh my god, dude! You're getting Let's go! I'm like getting carried, man. I'm leaving. What? Wait! Oh, let's Team. go! Team! Team! How la? Oh! Oh, he, he, he needs to buy items, he... Okay, 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 I had enough. I had enough, D. Damn pain, Lassian. 
Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Oh, nice. Still running. Oi, why you do that now? You're gonna die. Ow. Okay. Work. Come set work. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Work. Totally work right there. Because I want to take down Dr. Kia's you know. There's a... I don't know, my team skill lah, uh, team, team skill lah. Uh, as now we see the engage going in. Oh, oh boy! Oh my god, this, what's right This Seraphine, man. As, uh, right now I do see my team just popping off, but your Seraphine is popping off even more, like, I think. I can't believe it, dude. What is happening? What is this? Why? Let's go, okay, okay. Come in, guys, come in, come in. Huh? I am, Kambing? come I am, come in. Chicken lamb. Then pin we wait. Where did my Zaya go? Hello? Yeah, I think Seraphine broken. Not fair la. Oh, oh my, my god. goodness gracious me. Hi bye. Sure not. Sure. Hey, bye. Really bye. Bye. Hey. <laughs> I'm okay though. I think uh, team doing fine la, actually. Team doing A okay. Would be worse. What is wrong with Okay. He's having a he's having a blast with his eye. Yeah. I think he finally needed to buy items though. Doesn't matter. Oh. Give him gold lah. Give him gold some more. We scale. Ow, 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 ow. Run hurts, away. Don't know why. You tried to run away here lah. Oh, oh my god. Oh goodness. my god, the apprehend is good. Come on, lah. Try to kill us. Kill us. Why did I why did I use another? Why you bother lah? Why, why did I bother lah? He's trying to bother us all. <laughs> okay, but still looking decent. Oh my I'm goodness, the root on three. The Seraphine, man. Uh oh. Oh, the encore is good! Yo! The combo at the back! Let's go! Let's go! And the follow up is good, the follow up is good. Let's go, Golden Phoenix. Oh, okay, never mind. Buddha. Serious uh? Good not, sure not. Good try, good try. Solid effort. Ah, see? Oh, you don't want to run away? Okay. Why are you trying to run away, this guy? I don't know why. Try to run away. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That really hurt, so... I run away. <laughs> 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 ah, the portal belt! Ugh. Hey, why are you trying to go in, hello? My Just team helping is there, the man. combo push in. My team is there, man. Okay, okay, lah, okay. Uh, let's see, I need a bit of... Hmm. Wah. Oh, I know what to get, I know what to get, I know what to get. Just for help. Yeah, I think my team is like, what, what, what you do that for, huh? What did you do that? Please. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, they don't need me, man. They really don't need me. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, team! Uh... Team? Oh, I'm back, actually. I should be playing. Uh... <laughs> guys? What's Dude, happening right now? Everybody's dead, man. Wait! Oh, never mind, never mind. I got uh, my boy. Ah, snap! Another one! Oh, he missed, he missed the root. He missed the root. Snap, 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 snap. Another one! Okay, they're not back. Looking for item. Map. Hey, what is this bullet doing, man? Huh? Ayo. I'm sorry. I'm very tanky now. <laughs> Ayo. Ah, scared. Ooh, let's go. Oh, you leave my friend alone. You leave. You leave my Seraphine alone. You leave her alone! Huh? Good idea. You don't have any... Oh, you're, you're I alive. do, I do. Oh, keep running! Run! Ah, see? Don't you fight me. Yeah, yeah, now you're dead. Doesn't matter. You didn't save your Seraphines, man. Now you're gonna lose your life too, man. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. How are you still alive? Oh, no. Save okay. your tears for another day. Guys? What's happening? We got this. Guys? Hold up. Hold up. Oh, oh, but this guy's Alistar. Eh. Ah, take him down. 
Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, oh, I need oh, to change my game plans here, I think. A bit. My game plan is changed here. see, plus, we are gonna get into the games into here. The game. I'm back. Oh, what, how vengeance. do I get rooted? Okay, ouch, ouch. Mm. 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 Oh, whoop, ow. Sorry, guys, I have to get to see my knee. Uh, <laughs> Where, where, where are the rest of you guys? You, you, you guys want to fight or something? Oh, hi chef. Oh, Did yeah. you just ignite me? Yes, sir. Oh. Eva. Oh my goodness. Okay. That was scary. So holding on. Somebody shield me, man. I need some healing. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Oh, I'm dead. Try this now. Back back to front. Three healings, thank you guys. Okay, this is bad. Yeah, see? Oh my goodness, the charm! No! Live! Okay, this is bad. Ah. Ah, see? Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This might not be the greatest. What is period. my Zaya? <laughs> Zaya, where are you? Oh no. Dead dog. <laughs> right, one. Terrible. <laughs> oh, let's go. Hey, my team. Hey, hey, don't die, la. please. Please don't die. Wow, well, okay, just barely avoids that charm. Please don't die, guys. Don't die. Stay alive. Stay alive, guys. Oh no. Let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Don't die, don't die, please. You don't have much time left. <laughs> Let's go. Ah. Wait a second. Oh no. Everybody run! Run! What is my team doing? Why do they keep dying to that? Okay, okay. ISO cannot die. Lah. ISO hypocrite, you know. Hypocrite Nazis. <laughs> okay. Two tanky boys. Tanky, tanky boys. Oi! Go away. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Oh, what's the plan? Yeah, I need to chill. Uh. Yeah, chill, you chill, do. chill. You treat, guys. Okay. I do. Seraphine and Aram is something else, man. Something else, man. <laughs> it's just gonna keep keeping us. I'm at full health, dude. What the? Yeah, look at that. You're almost back at full health. Oh, oh no. Oh, but that charm. Oh my goodness, save yourself. Oh my. Ah, oh my. Kamri! Okay, wait, we're still long way to go, actually. Oh, your damage dealers are still alive. Yep. No charm for you. I should. Mm. Oh. oh no 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 no. Ow, 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 ow. I get a flash. Ow, ow, ow. Oh nice, nice, okay, okay. It's a big kill, it's a big kill. Shut down. Shoot. Okay, still got chance. Yeah, she Where's everybody else? I do. Oh. I do. Okay, okay. Gotta, gotta. Oh my goodness, Al. Why does it hurt so much? Okay. Uh oh. Oh. I didn't Please reach. Please save, save my boy. Save my boy. Save your tears for another day. Wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, sir, is, this game is so even, eh? It's, it's dead even, it's actually intense right here. Yeah, so right now... Okay. Come on. Somebody... Nautics, uh, man. You die first. Go. Wait. Go. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> Woo! 
Oh, scary right there. Okay, right now. Still waiting. The damn low, huh? The is. Don't, don't look at me, man. So many other people. Don't, oh my, what the? Oh my goodness gracious. Man. Yes! I don't think that's good. That's not good. Uh, ah! End the game, guys! Wait, wait, hold on! Ah! Oh, come on, we get the ace earlier. Oh no, I don't think we can. Oh! Oh, wait. Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Miss play! Oh, wait! Oh, Miss wait! Play! Miss guys, play, dude! Guys, they saw <laughs> Guys! I'm sorry? Oh, my goodness, why? Oh, hey, the Zonius was so good, dude. Guys? Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh! Woo! Yeah! Okay, that's a good one. Gotta be able to go in, man. Go, go in. <laughs> Oh my goodness, why did what? Guys, uh, uh, guys, okay, okay. everybody, they all be going all in, baby, all in. Wait, don't I still have my GA? Okay, never mind, it's not all in now. I'm gonna be alive, bro, now, okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh. Guys, wait for me, guys. I'm here. Oh, I, oh the, you can't use GA in the fountain. I see, I see. So, we go in. Wait. Yeah, that's right, we hurt. Oh my goodness gracious. Wait. Okay, okay. We got this. Hold up. Hold up. It's scary, right? Look how low health you are. Hello? Hello? No, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, flash. Okay. Okay, you guys are low. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, no, crown oh, is no. activated. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, 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 what did I tell you, man? What did I tell you, man? God. The bleed! What did I tell you, man? The bleed! Okay. Well, this this is gonna be... I, don't, I think we're gonna be able to just come back in time. What did I tell you, man? Yeah, easy as a pie, right? Easy as pie? Yes, sir. Easy as a pie. Hmm... Guys, end the game, guys. Yes! Yes! Oh my goodness. Oh Wait. my god, that, that was, was a close that game was close. right that was there. Close. That was too close. But Dr. Fierce, I'm sorry to say, you're gonna lose once again. Man, that, my team was actually popping off. They did really, really well there, but oh my goodness gracious, though. Shout out to my teams for carrying me, the heavy, heavy <laughs> Garen right there. So. <laughs> heavy Garen. Thank you guys, man, for oh, good stuff. Oh, oh my shit. <laughs> you, your misplay almost cost the game, huh? No lie. Almost, almost, almost. No lie. Calculated lah, the one. As you know, you guys misplayed, tried to kill me so much. Ah, see what happened? Okay lah, okay. Yes, but that so was good, good stuff. GG, GG, GG. one on one kill less. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, all right. So with that, that is the end of the Aram game. Hope uh, you guys enjoy it here. But of course, we are going into the next game very, very soon. Of course, it will be the top eight of the bracket. So uh, what is the situation? Huh? What is the situation huh, now? Are, yeah. you, are we doing it right now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So we are going to get into the game very, very soon, of course. We're going to wait for the teams to get in. Mm -hmm. And uh, zwop, zwop. You know, you know, I'll see you on the flip side. Yeah? Ah, uh, ah, that's what classic, that's classic. But uh, you know, we are. Let, let's take a look at the brackets here. So let us see who has made it to the top 
eight, eight here. Ah, oh, so many D. QWER made it to the top eight with Panic Time, and we also have Boom versus Alpha Pro and two DVDs here. So we probably we are going to be watching Boom Esports versus Alpha Pro here. So Perlas, Eng Silangan, and Mocha, they have to wait for their games. Yeah, so there we have it. That is going to be our top eight at the moment. So again, as you said, we are going to be seeing Boom versus Alpha Pro very, very shortly. So can't wait to see how that is going to go. Boom, they've been playing quite, quite well. Of course, I do like how they sort of pace their game, right? They, they take what they can and then they make sure that you don't get anything else, you know? They, they don't overextend, they don't try to get greedy for the kills, they don't try to over farm or anything like that. They get exactly what they need and get out. Yes, they have to just go in, get out, and they're just so, so, com so confident in the way they play here. So la yesterday, we weren't able to get them in the top four because nope. they did lose that to Mocha yeah. to get into the top four right there. So today, maybe it will change in their fates. They want to get into the top four, but they are going to be up against Alpha Pro here. So uh, it is going to be quite interesting. Another Indonesian versus Philippines matchup. It looks like Boom are the only Indonesian teams still left in the pool and so far they seem to be one of the strongest teams overall in the pool so far. Yeah, again, last time Boom wasn't able to make it past the semifinals, I believe, because they got knocked out by Mocha right here. But they're on the other side of the bracket waiting for their opponent. So, gonna see exactly how far Boom can take it. Maybe they can try to make their way into the, at least the semifinals or even the grand finals. I really hope we do see them get in there. It's been so long since we've seen an Indonesian team up, up there with the rest of the teams. It's been very Philippine dominated. And yesterday we saw a Malaysian champ in a very, very long time. It's very refreshing to see. So, hopefully, we get to see a little bit of variety in there but before we talk any more about that i also want to thank everybody who participated in that last game of aram right there it was actually a lot of fun and you guys played really well sorry you had to carry me though so <laughs> my team man my team too good yeah. my too team too good we uh it's a bit dicey towards the end yeah but we defended yeah. you know we defended <laughs> we knew that you guys uh, too you too itchy like to try to kill me yeah too itchy eh? you have to know we have the darius yeah, the Darius was so scary. The Proto Bell, the Apprehend, you slap. So many times with it, it was so good. Yeah, so with that, thank you guys all so much who has participated. This is not going to be the last, obviously, in the future as well. We're definitely going to be having some ARAM with the viewers here. So, but with that, we're still going to get into the top eight. The top eight so far is very, very interesting. Uh -huh. Those are Perlas. I don't think they were. They didn't make it to the top four yesterday. No, they. I don't they think didn't they make it to the top four. So this time they are gonna try their best to get into that as well. Mocha, of course, they are your grand champions for yesterday, mm -hmm. and we do have still a boom still yet to be in the top four after an amazing performance that we saw in uh, yesterday's Summoners Odyssey here. But today, of course, they are gonna try to go for it against Alpha Pro. We haven't really seen that much of Alpha Pro. No. So interesting to see how what their playstyle is, what picks they'll go for. Maybe the, this time they're gonna be the first team to pick Irelia. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows at this point? But it was still very interesting. We already saw Raven. It didn't really work out. It seemed very good at the start, but again, there's so so difficult to actually get it, get it to the power spike. It's just a monster in the late game series. So uh, I do want to see Irelia being picked, of course, hundred yeah. percent. But most of these teams, they're not really. They don't seem to be interested in going for the Irelia here. Yeah, it's actually. I, I think out of the two new champions coming out right there, I think Riven is the more prominent one. Of course, if you do have the knockup, you would have a little bit more. You know, it's kind of difficult to land the stuns because you have to line up each one properly, and then you have to make sure they're in between. So it could be pretty difficult to land in uh, on on form right here. But it looks like they're gonna get the band sorted out as we get into the first game of the third round. So Boom is gonna be on the blue side. They're gonna get that first ban and first pick right here. And Alpha Pro, they're gonna be banning out two in a row. So Gragas gonna get that first ban for Boom. I do like it. Yeah, Gragas is gonna be super, super solid. Very, very strong as you do have to ban in out. Alpha Pro, they do have two bans. So it's gonna ban out the Fiora as well. So they don't want Tufts to get his Fiora. And they do have one more ban. What will they go for here? Six is still in the pool, Camille oh, yeah. in the pool, so you don't want to give that up as well. You have to be very, very careful. They're going to take out the Camille here. So it looks like, boom, they're going to be banning up probably a Galio or a Diana so that they can go for the Ziggs first pick. And it's going to be quite strong, especially with Platypus on the Ziggs. 
Yeah, so going to have to just wait and see exactly what they're thinking about on this last ban. But again, you mentioned it before. They might just try to ban out another mid laner. Uh, Galio can also be played as support, but most likely going to be a mid laner. Oh, it's Rangar actually going to be Rengar. Okay, so they don't want to have, they, they don't want that threat on the back line right there. So they're going to take that out of the picture entirely. So the very, very good bans coming in from everybody right here. Again, I think a little respect ban coming in on Tufts right there. Does not want to let the Fiora rock. Well, but Renekton is still in there. We still have a lot of strong top lane champions. And again, we mentioned Irelia and Riven are available. So just want to see exactly how these teams are going to play out that lane in particular. Yeah, there's still a lot of picks actually still left in the pool. Galil is going to be up, so we're probably going to see Galil again. But Galil does have an annoying time against Ziggs because again, oh, yeah. Ziggs is just a lane bully, especially in the melee, just able to win so many lanes. I'm just here farming. Mm -hmm. All he does is farming, but in the meantime, the byproduct of that is that the enemy gets harassed. They're not able to get in lane, so they do have boom. They are going to be having the first pick here, yeah, and yeah, it does us. definitely going to be the Ziggs For pick sure. here without fail. As it looks like Alpha Pro, definitely they do have the Gallo to go for, they do have the Diana to go for as well, but those two picks even are still going to be quite scary against the Ziggs. So in the laning phase, it's going to be quite tough here, and Kaiser is going to be a great, great pickup for the side of Alpha Pro. They do have one more though. They, do, they might just go for the support pick, they might just go for the mid pick here, they're not too sure. And they're gonna go for the Lee Sin here. Yeah, and in the meantime, Chef, can you help me pronounce the name of the third player into Alpha Pro right there? He's a... Uh, uh, Fuki. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right there. So that is good. Yeah, we call him Kiza right there. So that is him. And then Varus, I like the Varus pick oh with the Janna. God. So really fun to see right there. But Lee Sin, he's going to get picked out straight away. And Oriana, haven't seen her in a while. Going to be very, very careful wow, of the shockwaves right there. This is, this is the game that we saw the first time we saw them. I said that Tufts, I think, was playing Fiora. Yeah, Tufts was playing Fiora, but I like the Darius pick and pick the... Pick Irela. Line, pick yeah. it. Please, we want to see Irelia here. Please! Please! And Please. we're going to be able to get that C and Irelia here for the first time in Wild Red Summoner's Odyssey. But boom, IDs come. They're strong. We've, like seen them, we've seen them make this comp work and it's so, so scary as oh, well. Yeah. Varus 6 is incredible here, but Alpha Pro, we have the Irelia. We have, it, we have not been able to see how well she can do and I will be surprised if she doesn't do well here because this is going to be a game to watch Dr. Pierce. This is a, I want to watch it. Lah. Yeah, so it looks like they are going to get prepped and ready to drop into the Wild Rift. But again, this is going to be the first time we see the Irelia in. I do, I, okay, honestly speaking, I haven't played the Irelia just yet. I've just seen a lot in my ranked games and actually it doesn't turn out too well. I mean, um, <laughs> Aurelia is a uh, hard champion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. In plat, we don't, we don't think about it too much. You don't probably, you won't probably see a lot of that until much later or higher up into the ranks. Maybe you probably you see, see but people they, they clearly don't have the mechanical skills for it because Aurelia is does require a lot of Very mechanics tricky. to play. But once you really get it down, once you really master the champion, and you're able to play it at an optimal level, Aurelia is a monster. She's a monster in this game. So let us take a look at the game. Game one of the top eight here. We will have, boom, eSports. They're going to be up against Alpha Pro here. And look at this. It looks like the side of Apple is going to just make a quick, quick rotation towards the million, maybe in anticipation of a roam here. Yeah, so gonna just try to... Okay, no, it looks like they're just gonna be securing up their buffs right now. And it's not gonna be mirrored right here. They're gonna actually go for blue right here first for the Lee Sin. Probably wants to get a bit of priority over and to maybe try to fight the top lane, help out the Irelia first, because I don't know how well this fight... Okay, Irelia is very mobile. Gonna be able to move around quite a bit, but again, you're gonna have to worry about those bleed stacks. Actually manages to avoid the first kill right there, so only one bleed stack gonna go on top right here, but looking at how things are going right now, I, I do wanna see more of that top lane eventually because I haven't just seen an Aurelia just yet in a lot of these games, but pretty standard down at the bottom. You're gonna have to worry about this combination in the bottom in general because overgrowth on Kai'Sa is gonna be very, very scary. Not only is she gonna be able to just pump a little bit more damage, she's also gonna be very, very hard to kill at that point, so gonna be, uh, you're gonna have to look out for that 
that in general. And she's actually going to go for the Kithian Ring first, and then go for the Supercharge right there. But look at that, already taking the fruit away, just does not want to give that to Irelia right now. So actually going to be looking pretty good. And it looks like they're going to be helping out to get the top scuttle first right now. But uh, yeah, they're just waiting it out. They might try to go for a jump later on onto the top lane. Yeah, and Alpha, of course, they're just going to get the bottom one traded out. No problem. There's still a very, very even game. Hard to tell how this game will go, especially just minute one. Uh, calm down guys, we don't know anything's happening here But Tufts is actually taking a lot of damage from Patutin here But the fire stacks is gonna be out But Tufts is gonna get taken down Patutin oh. able to get the kill And dodges the stun from Vibritania as well So a great start in the top lane And Arela is super super scary once she really gets going as well So a uh, boom, they have to be a bit worried But of course Tufts He's going to be one level down, but he just needs to farm out a little bit to try to get back. It's nope, not even one level down now, two levels down here. Yeah, so going to be a while. The ult is already on the table for Irelia there, and you don't want to fight in that area. So going to have to see exactly how Tufts is going to be able to react to this situation right here. And I believe they're just going to be trying to bully Tufts into this top lane right now. Does not does want to make it easier for the Irelia to get activated and be a factor in the later game at this point. But you're also going to have to look out at how this Kai'Sa is going to try to get into the game right here, because that is also going to be a source of the damage here in for the side of Alpha, of course. But shutting down the Ziggs could also be a priority. You know, we need to also keep that in mind because as, as long as the Ziggs is running free, that's a lot of damage on the table and it could be very, very dangerous for in terms of objective. Oh, the Shockwave! Uh, solo Shockwave and the Lee Sin is going to go in on the mid trying to get a jump right there. Might get the pick off and there we have it. The Shockwave together with Lee Sin is going to be able to take a kill onto the Ziggs just as I was talking about it earlier. Yeah, and the ultimate, the level advantage, Patutin just dominating this lane and Alpha secure another kill right there. So 3-0 already. 84 Alpha and they're looking so so good especially in boom they are now just going to be down 2,000 gold here and going to this next dragon which is going to be up in around 30 seconds here they are going to be still quite worried especially with Alpha they're going to be having the shockwave up and ready they're going to have all the ultimates ready actually so they're not going to be able to have the team fight maybe besides the assault and battery from by Britannia and that was with the mega death bomb but now Chalice also used the ultimate they're going to try to go in for the scuttle but not able to get it there no they are able to get it there so at least going to be able to get some vision towards the dragon pit as alpha they're going to take their time they're going to reset and come back to it once boom it's going to be probably starting it up here yeah, so boom, they look like they're in a better position to get this mountain dragon at the point, but there is a lot of vision around for the side of Alpha to catch them out right here, but I think he's staying around for too long. They're going to be able to spot him out right there, but going to just quickly take the fruits and get straight into the dragon right now, and it looks like the defensive wall hasn't been quite yet built for the side of the dragon. Not going to try to gatekeep right there, but Lee Sin is going to immediately get booted out. The salt battery does go down. The Ultra Mega Death Bomb is going to land onto three right there. The damage is good, but no, not going to be able to sustain as the rest of the team, they collapse in and they're taking out the members one by one. Darius oh, misses entirely and has to escape right there. He uses the blast code to try and run away, but I don't think he's going to be able to run in time. He's doing his best, but no, okay, he's going to just barely escape right there, but very, very good engage coming in from Alpha. They're already looking very primed to take this Mountain Dragon with pretty much no contest as Lee Sin is making his way straight to the Mountain Dragon. And boom, they look like they still want to try to contest it, try to maybe go for a cheeky cheeky steal, but the Mountain Dragon is going to be low. They're going to go in. Vibrachana tries to go for the steal, but it looks like they're still able to get it for the side of Alpha, and they're now just going to be able to fall back here. Boom, the apprehend does not land. So Alpha are just going to be fine, not even needing to lose a single member, but boom, are immediately going to reply for this mid turret take. So a great choice. They are very aware of how the state of the game is going. They need to get some gold as they are down 3,000 gold here. And now bring this down to a 2,000 gold lead. This is not going to be so bad, but still quite bad knowing that Alpha are still super, super strong in the team fights again. Kiza getting the great shot waves and the damage coming from Pato team is a little bit too much for the side of Boom to handle at this moment. Yeah, so gonna have to look out for that. The rotations have already been made. Now the top laners are at the bot lane as it is going to be the Red Herald spawning in about 10 seconds right there. Need to make sure that they have a bit of priority into the lane close to the Rift Herald so that they can opt to go for a tank. The first tower gold has already gone in the side of Boom's favor right here, but getting the Rift Herald out of the side of Boom will be very, very good. Getting rid of a lot of the standing gold onto the plate on 
onto this team because if they manage to get even more gold and equalize this out, it could be pretty bad though. But it looks like Tusk, he does want to just bother the Aurelia a little bit. He doesn't want to fully commit, of course. It could be really, really bad if he sticks around for any long break because the level lead right there. And even then, look how much damage is going on right now. He could even try to afford a tower dive and just take out Tusk right here. It could be very, very dangerous. Yeah, and in the meantime, boom. It's just gonna go oh for the rip, and as you predicted, Dr. Fierce, you do have a PhD in predicting fights. Yes, Patutin does secure the kill. So Alpha, Illusa just gonna give up the rip herald, but it's a great choice coming from their side. They're gonna try to pressure the top side and the mid side, and also the bottom side here. So Platinum is taking a lot of damage from the Akatian range, trying to blast back the nice side step from Kaisa, but gonna get taken down with the various ultimate. So great, great pickup. Alpha still so up with the gold they're having almost a 5,000 gold lead here and looks like Viper Tanya might get oh, no. caught up maybe trying to catch up and keep them to the back the redemption comes up like was trying to kite away the assault and battery is there as well as it looks like Lakia will have to run away but the free Britannia also gets the dash away so a close call for both teams boom doesn't have to lose another person here but again just Tufts not having a great time you could say he's having a tough time here yeah Getting shut down a lot in the top lane right there. Aurelia is now a force to be reckoned with right there. Finishing off the Blade of the Rune King, going for the Triforce right there. Going to be very, very well stacked right now. And it's going to be very, very hard to fight this right here because the Shockwaves have been on point for uh, Kiza right there. Doing so, so solid right now. And it looks like it's going to be a jump right there. The stun does miss. He misses a couple of the skill shots right now. Going to get the Apprehend and the five stacks is going to go on. But he runs into the ult right there. Going to be very, very dangerous. The ult does go down. He does need the damage out, but they tie it out right there even with all the skill shots missing for the side of Aurelia they are able to tie it out but that is shut down gold for the side of Tufts and he's gonna go for that Bramble vest just to make sure that it is a pain to try and stay into the fight right there so good stuff coming in from Tufts but still just barely tying it out and still it is a trade there yeah, and Alpha still gonna be slightly up in the gold. Not slightly, lah. It's actually quite a lot, lah. Quite a lot. Five thousand gold up, but boom, are fighting back. They are still going with the game plan. They do scale very well into the late game, especially when Chalice and Platypus still get those items, able to deal a lot of burst damage. And especially if they are able to somehow get this Inferno, they are actually looking prime to be quite comfortable going into the mid game here. As still, there is gonna be a lot of team fight abilities coming from Alpha. They do have the Shot Wave. They do have the Aurelia Ultimate. They also do have the Dragon as well alpha are going to be able to get the mid turret here but Ouch. boom they are just trying to set up for this dragon so they don't want they just want to keep alpha away from this dragon as much as they can as the dragon is going to spawn they're probably going to start it up here alpha is going to try to put some pressure towards the mid lane but actually boom they're, not, they're just trying to keep them away they're not even going for the dragon but alpha can just take as long as they want here as still boom needs to be able to start it up they will be spotted and they're going to try to pull the dragon away as alpha are just looming towards the sidelines but is trying to get some damage in with the rolling bombs he's just trying to poke them out but the religion is going to heal them back so no problem there as they are going to try to go in lake here gets the kick they're going to just get some damage in the dragon is so so low oh, the bombs good. are in and the steals are out as well lake is in able to steal it but is it gonna be worth it alpha they're all so so low and they lose two only losing top in the process and the bomb is gonna get that snipe onto apple as well so boom they only lose one but they lost the inferno dragon and that i don't know what is gonna be worth it but then it's gonna try to go in onto challenge but won't be able to get the slows right there so alpha even with all that still able to get the inferno that's not gonna be so so bad here yeah, so, ooh, okay, stopping the recall right there. A little cheeky right there as he stops the Kaisa from recalling just earlier on. But looking at the Ziggs, he's slowly getting the, starting to get activated right there. The ult was so good, got a lot of the members really low, and they were forced to escape after that. But that was only after the dragon fell. So it was really, really tough for them at this point. And now they're down two dragons right now. The Mountain and the Infernal is going to go to the side of Alpha. But Boom has sort of equalized the tower takes right there. But they're still behind five thousand gold and it's going to be really really tough for a lot of this game to go on right now as it is as well the Aurelia is a is a big big threat already up one level over Tufts right here and it's going to be very 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 hard for him to try and 1v1 for her right here yeah it's still already alpha they're still going to be trying to put a lot of pressure there is a lot of attention 
towards the Baron here, but look at Vibe Britannia. It's gonna be trying to just big them out, but look who is there. Alpha oh, no. is gonna be able to just deal so much damage. He will use the ultimate, but a nice stun actually stuns up Kaiser under the turret. He's taking a lot of damage, has to flash away a great play from Vibe Britannia to actually stop the ultimate right there. He was just trying to go for the dash, but it still worked out at the end of the day as Kaisa outs right in and gets knocked up. So they were able to lo not lose any members for the side of Boom, but still a little bit too far forward. Platypus is going to try to get to clear the way towards the top side, but they are they might just go for the kill here. The blast back is good with the prototype, but not landing the sonic wave. It's going to be quite scary, but the shock wave is good. And now Platypus does have the zonis, though, and they're going to get the root onto Kaisa as well with the monsoon pushing them back. And now Alpha, they are getting punished for this play, but they still are able to get this turret right here. So Still not losing a single member yet. They're gonna try to chase down Oriana here. Kiza is just trying to get some damage. They know there's no shockwave, so they're gonna do all the damage that they can, but still getting kited left and right for the side of Alpha. In the meantime, Lakia is really just annoying Thousand at this point as Lakia is still gonna be alive here, but it's all alone in the mid lane. But again, boom, they do not have any catch once there is no assault and battery. So Alpha are just playing it as fast as they can and Still gonna be 7,000 go up. They're gonna be prepped for the next dragon and still with this lead, they're gonna be putting a lot of pressure towards the Baron as well. Yeah, so with that being said, it looks like the Ariel is making the way down into the bot lane yet again, but running into Tufts right away. Gonna be able to get the five stacks really early on and putting in a lot of damage. But oh my goodness, the Zonia's right there. The Zix ult is also gonna mess, and he's just gonna be able to walk away from all that. Two alts getting burned in the situation and walking out alive. Gonna be hurting them quite a bit. And it looks like they're gonna go for a Baron right here, knowing that the rest of the team, they're a little bit looking forward to the Irelia right there, but it looks like they are gonna be primed for a Deal. But with this delay, they might try to just delay it and reset it right now. But it looks like they're going to get the engage. The Zonius is going to go down. They try to go re-engage onto the Oriana. But the Vera shot does so much damage right there. Getting a lot oh. of damage in there. Gets another hit. And Lee Sin is on the back burner right there. Has to heal up. Gets the smite on another Krug to just heal up right there. But very, very good stuff coming in from Boom. They managed to stop the Baron take just in time and forces it to reset. Not going to be able to steal it though. But overall, just coming out of there barely winners in that situation. Yeah, again, boom, they do have the late game in their favor. They have all the poke in the world. They have the Varus, they have the Six. They are just gonna be a-okay, especially getting to the late game. There's a lot of wave clear. There's a lot of poke coming from Varus and Ziggs. But now the dragon is gonna be spawning here. The Cloud Dragon Alpha already starting it up, but Tufts might be able to deal a lot of damage. Pantheon does not have the Zonas anymore. He just used it to try to dodge the decimate, the Doxy Guillotine from Tufts. But they do have the they do have the shockwave ready, so a lot of ultimates still ready for the side of Alpha. And boom, they're doing a very, very good job at keeping them away because Alpha they are respecting the damage, the poke damage coming from Boom here. So we're still waiting it out. But the team's still in the front trying to get the stun and gonna get the oh. stun battery from downtown onto the side of Lekila. And Lekila gets taken down. The monster's gonna push them back. But the team's gonna get taken down. Double kill for Tuff. The Ignite might take him down. He's still alive. So he's not gonna get taken down. It looks like Kaisa is able to do so much. But the Ferris Arrow almost taking down Kaisa right there. So Alpha only able to get out of that with just getting the Janna here. And boom, they did still a very, very great job at keeping Alpha away. Yeah, so they're sort of really equalizing a lot of this game right here. Alpha, they are still having the gold lead right now at about 6k, 7k right there, just jump right there. 7k gold lead coming in for the side of Alpha, but they're doing such a good job at holding them back right now. They are very, very uh, careful on trying to jump in right here, but it could be very, very uh, good for the side of Alpha if they do manage to pick out a crucial... Uh, well, okay, what's up, what's up? <laughs> what? I'm kidding. I'm missing. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not trying to interrupt you, man. Oh but my goodness. Here, of gracious. course. I mean, as you said, boom, are just keeping them at bay. They're just Alpha just really respecting the Ziggs and it's a good thing that they are, but now they're trying to get the kill oh, no. on to by Britannia. He doesn't deflect the root, does land, and Tuff's gonna go in, but the overgrowth is there. Just a lot of damage though. But again, the Zonia is just stopping the Nazi Guillotine and they're gonna take down two. Make that three here as only Platypus and Damski alive right there. So Alpha 
so so strong Palpatine oh. not Palpatine Palpatine here yeah. gave us a takedown one more which is on Platypus leaving Damski all alone and Alpha they might just be able to run it down here as there's just no one left alive it's gonna be the backdrop protection no minions there uh, Palpatine they're quite low you're gonna get executed so and Lekula as well so Alpha It'll, I don't know whether they can. They do have the minions now. Three members up. But Demski is going to be the only one that he does get a shutdown onto Lekila. So, and oh he's going to get a double goodness. kill here. So Alpha, he has to fall back. Yeah, there's no more chance for them to take that one right there. So they're going to be retreating. The Call Dragon is up and alive. The Baron is also back at the Shockwave. He has to flash out because he was worried about the follow-up right there. But not no Shockwave as they might just try to fight out for the Baron right there. Knowing that they got multiple pickoffs right here. It could be the yeah, start of something really good for the side of Boom right here. It could be the takeover right now as they try no to steal the momentum. Yeah, there's no Shockwave. They did a solo Shockwave onto the Janna. So really, really dangerous right here. They probably have the D1. They're working the TP comes in, but the every end from over the wall actually yes, Kiza right there. Kiza does have to spend the Zonias, but it's gonna get taken down and now boom with the shutdown able to try to go for the Baron. They don't want it to get stolen. It's so so low. The boom team were able to get the Baron and Lakila is gonna get taken down as well. So Alpha, one fight when they throw all these executes out, boom are just going to be able to get the Baron and get two big kills and now they're going to be able to just snowball this advantage here. Yeah, so they, they capitalized off of that mistake overextending into the Nexus. Again, they could try to take it over, but they didn't have... They backdoor protection kicked in. There were no minions in there and they stayed too long. They got picked off one by one and now they're paying for it with this inhibitor tower that's going to go down really, really soon. Again, Baron buff, it is going to be very, very difficult to defend this right now as all the members, they can just stay inside and poke this tower down. Even the minion is doing the so root. much there, But the root is going to land. The ult is good. They're going to be able to take a knockdown. The, the, the six ult is going to miss entirely. Was Wait. not too sure. Uh, it looks uh -oh. like they can try to take this out right now. They do have members ready. 46 uh, uh, seconds until the Lee Sin comes. No, until their member comes back here. But there's four members alive, but they're very, very low on health. I think they might just try to go for the Cloud Dragon with this advantage right now. Yeah, boom. They're just able to get an any turret just like that and equaling up the turrets as well. But they're still going to be down with 4,000 gold. But at this stage, the gain, the gold might not even matter anymore. It's boom. They have the Baron, but they have the Cloud Dragon as well. Able to kite even better this time. So. Boom, I'm just gonna go for a reset. They're gonna get their power spike. They're gonna be so, so strong. And as the Baron, they need to try to get something going with the Baron buff right now because the Baron buff is gonna wear off very, very soon. But with this, they're gonna feel A okay here. Alpha, what happens, man? It was just with that push onto the Nexus right there. They they didn't have any other objective to fight for. It didn't make they sense. They had the Cloud Dragon. Yeah, the, but the Cloud Dragon just spawned no, over No, before, there. a long time already. Oh, it was a long time already. Like, ah, let's go for the push, let's go for the Nexus. But getting punished that heavily, this might not bode well. They are still ahead, as I said. They are still able to maybe go for a push if they get one more wipe. But it is looking very, very dicey as we know Ziggs is able to just clear the waves like non-stop. Yeah, and the Baron buff it is still up. Still, as we speak, they're getting the lanes pushed in right there. And Tufts is uh, solo pushing right now onto the bot side right there. And they're going to be able to take it all the way to their inhibitor tower. And the team knows this. They're going to have to just make a beeline to stop Tufts right here. But Tufts, I don't think he's going to be committing too much into this lane as the Baron buff just wears out. He's going to just recall right now. Just wants to figure out where the rest of the team is right here. But the lanes, they're getting evened out right here. And they're going to be able to try and bring this back right now as they have evened out. The it must get one pick off. Oh, but it's one pick off right there. As you said, it could be catastrophic for the side of Alpha. Yeah, especially if I it's on Kiza. No shockwave, no big team fight ability. Palutine is gonna be quite aggressive. He really wants to clear up the minion waves as Kaiser is gonna try to deal some damage in the front line as well. But boom again. Look at their poke. Varys Zig just super super strong there, but they still need to be very very careful here. Chalice does get hit by the Sonic Wave, but Lakila is not gonna be able to get the engage in, but still it's going to be quite scary here by Britannia of course once he gets a great engage there's gonna be a lot of species a lot of zonias for the side of alpha to actually disengage but boom if they time it well they get the burst down one of these members being down could mean the end for the side of alpha so they have to be very very careful here they do not want to give up this game 
Yeah, but it looks like they're going to get some vision into the Baron pit right now as it's going to be popping up in about a second from here. So it's on the map. They are going to be looking at it. If they are able to take this next Baron, there's going to be bye-bye next inhibitor towers right here. But I don't think they're going to be going for it. Their mid is completely open right now. The next is very low as well. Yeah, and the next is very low. Any single push, if they're not watching the uh, push right here, it could be the end. So they're going to have to just be very, very vigilant on this mid lane as they're actually making a full push down this mid. And if if they do manage to get a pick off right here, I don't think the Nexus will be able to stand a couple pokes even right now. So they're gonna have to keep a close eye on that. But it looks like they really, really want to this take this Baron right here. But it's a huge risk and it's a race of time. And Platypus spots the rest of the push right here. It's gonna satchel over the wall right there, just trying to stay alive. But it looks like they're gonna try to go for the push down right now. It could be anything right here. The ult, just to stop the rest of the minions from being into the Nexus right there. The Vi ult is gonna go down onto the Lulu right there. The root is good. Varus is gonna get the ult. They're gonna get the follow-up, they're gonna take out Lulu right here. They're gonna be able to get one pick off and walk away with it right there. So just barely staying in this game right here. Boom is gonna just try to push this mid lane back yet in again and maybe look at the Baron, but it's gonna take too long. If they take too much time, it could be catastrophic. Again, Alpha, they had the right read, trying to go for a sneaky, sneaky push as Boom, they immediately backed off on the Baron. They're like, wait, our base getting pushed in, let's back off here. So this next dragon especially is going to be the Elder Dragon, the Elder Ocean and that. So a lot of sustain from this, a lot of damage from Boom, they can easily sustain with the Elder Buff, with the Elder Buff Ocean Drake here. So Alpha again, trying to go for these hasty plays, they can't afford to make another mistake as one mistake. Boom can easily just steal back this game. This Baron is still alive, but both teams are keeping tabs on it as much as they can. If either one gets it, the push is going to be a little bit too hard for any of these teams to deal with. And Boom are immediately going to start up the Elder Dragon here. But Alpha, they're not going to take this line down. They're going to try to contest it as Lakila is going to be in the front line trying to go for a sneaky sneaky wrap around here. By Bitana is in the front line. He's looking to just get three targets here. He wants to get Kaisa. He wants to get Kiza. He wants to get... Palutine as well, but it's going to be quite difficult, especially with Palutine. I do think he still has a Zonest as well. All of them, they have a Zonest to get the disengage, but again, Alpha, they are respecting it. They're not trying to overextend. They're waiting for Boom to engage, oh, they disengage and get the ultimate again, and Boom are going to be starting out. Alpha are going to treat it out with the Baron here as Boom. They are going to be spotting it out and making their way there, so no need for the Elder. We're going to try to contest for the Baron, but the Baron is going to be so low and they're going to immediately take it down, so Alpha are able to get it and the engage is coming in though onto the side of Kaisa. Kaisa does have the Zonias though, but he's not going to be able to stop a lot of this. He does have the GA and they're going to just push Lee Sin back. Lee Sin is all the way in the back and Kaisa dealing a lot of damage but taking a lot as well. Bipitan tries to go in for one more. Tusk is in the front line. They're able to take down two and looking for three more. Batatine able to take down one more. Only one person going to be left which is Blender but he has the Zonias. He has accepted it. Fade Alpha with that great parentate are just going to be able to end the game here. So really solid stuff, ending it off with an ace right there. Did lose one member, lost the Lee Sin right there. And with this, they're going to be able to push down the towers. This is no doubt going to be the end of the game as the respawn timers are way too long for the rest of the members to get in there. So that is going to be the first game going to Alpha Pro in the round three at the, <laughs> for the first game right there. Close, close game. That could have been anyone's game about Alpha. Just recognizing that the fact that Boom are going for the Elder, they could easily just melt down the Baron, especially with their lead, with their items right there. So this was really just a game of a coin flip at this point, pretty much. And able to, them getting the Baron buff was all that they needed to just secure that game. And close, close game for Boom to really come back. It was really one mistake away from either team there to actually get taken down. And it was Alpha able to win that game one very very closely at that so let us take a look at these stats coming up very very soon here so let us see who is the mvp kiza is the mvp he died one single time six one and nine he probably also dealt no, the most damage does go to Patutin. I, uh, ha uh, it's probably Patutin or... Uh, I don't know if the Kaisa was... Uh, Kaisa also did a lot of damage right there, but we're just gonna have to see. But with Vi Britannia is gonna be the MVP on the other side. The last item is actually gonna be the Stairs huh? Gauge right there, but oh my goodness, we're both wrong! It is Huh? Platypus? Ah, they were normal lah. Yeah, yeah, do we even count that? Talking about their team lah. Ah, okay lah. Ah, so Kiza is okay. able to be the most damage for his team, but Platypus, of course, on the Ziggs. 
is dealing so, so much. Five Titan is tanking 39,000 damage, by Ooh. the way. So he was really the tank for his team. Tusk getting shut down a little bit too early. And Petrotti wasn't really scaling that well towards the late game. He's not able to deal as much damage. But again, just the team fight coming from the side of Alpha. Just super, super strong right there. And just one bear. It was just down to the barons at that point. Yeah, it was really just down to those objectives right there. And Alpha did a really solid job into taking it right there. So really, really good stuff. I can't wait to see exactly what they're going to be trying to do into the second game. If we're going to be seeing really again, or maybe even a Riven as well in the other team. You just have to see how it's going to turn out when we get ready to go into the next game for the round three. Yeah, so of course, we're not this set. We'll go into the top four, which will be continuing tomorrow. And top four, you already guarantee some prize money here. So, of course, it's very, very important. It's a very, very important match. As again, Alpha are going to be one game up, but I don't think they can afford to slip up once again. Yeah, they can. And we saw how, boom, they are really, really close to getting it. It's slightly one more. Not able to get it. La. Not able to get it. They actually brought it down to basically a 50-50. Yeah, so going to be very interested to see exactly how they're doing it. Uh, of course, I really do like the Ziggs and Varus pick right there. They actually did a lot of damage, and when they landed everything, they were a force to be reckoned with. There was just so much damage onto the table, but it was the only if they were are able to land it. And it's very, very tricky. You have to predict with the arrow and of course the, the death bomb. You have to be you need you have to have that extra foresight to figure out where they're gonna clump up or where they might try to run into. So it was gonna be very, very difficult to to try and land everything right there. But speaking of which, why don't we just look at the replays of the first game of round three that just happened just now? Yeah, so amazing, amazing game here. And again, Pat the team is doing so, so well in the top lane. Just shutting down Tufts and the nice flash away from the stun. And again, they're able to get the pick off onto Platypus as well. So Alpha here, again, is going to get a solo kill onto Tufts. Platypus team was two levels up. Tufts didn't even have the ultimate yet. As here, they are going to... Try to go for Lakila. Lakila is just trying to run away. He does get the kick. The redemption is good, but just they're only able to get one. But the fact that Kaisa was here, the Varus ultimate with not able to get anything going, and the nice take with the Mountain Dragon as well. Boom! Just half the back off here. Yeah, and this was the tower dive right there. It was it was gonna happen right there. No question about it. Was gonna be able to steal the deal with that kill right here. But gonna be really really cutting it close. The Kaisa is gonna get rooted. Easy kill coming in from the top. And right here, this was a little jump. Missed the stun. Missed the sh a follow up right there. Gets really close to the bleed stacks right there. Called it close, but ran into the alt at the last bit. Didn't get the last bleed stack from the Q because he ran in, but trades it off dead even in the top lane right there. Yeah, here just I'm bored. Unfortunate steal coming from the side of Alpha, but boom, were able to take down two here, I believe. They're able to get a nice rolling bump onto Apple, but they do lose two of their own as they are just super. They only lose one of their own, they lose Tufts right there. So again, it's going for the Cloud Dragon. Alpha, they were just trying to run away the bombs. They're just shutting down Likila as much as they can. And they're just trying to play front to back. They get the nice shoot onto two and they take down Patatine as well. Tufts going to be still alive here, boom. Are just trying to run away and Kaisa so so tanky but the arrow dealing so much damage if it wasn't for Apple <laughs> he would have been dead for sure so they are gonna be able to just barely run out of that that ult was actually quite interesting from the Aurelia stopping them from the retreat gonna be slowing them down and catching them trying to hide behind their tower right there so gonna be looking good the Zonia is gonna get popped from the Irelia here and this was the like okay we get a lot we got a lot of pickoffs we can probably try to take this nexus so they tried really it their best protection. Right here. yeah but backdoor protection kicked in the minion just comes in the tower cannon is the so dragon is alive, right? goodness yeah that yeah the cloud dragon is alive right there and instead they still try to continues this push even though they come back yet again even though the Janet is still out there gonna be able to get the knock up on the minions right there and look how much damage the Kaisa is taking it actually dies to the Janet right there and there was a misplay of say yeah boom we're able to capitalize and they go for the Baron here taking down Giza as well with a shutdown at that so a lot of gold and Lakila tries to go for the steal but the knockups coming up from Boom which is way too strong and takes him down so super close call Boom were barely able to get 
this in hip turret but not able to even touch the nexus right there so alpha trying to go for the play they get the kill onto platypus platypus just flashes away and boof were able to cut off their escape right there you can see five and it does go onto the lulu interesting choice they're able to take him down but i do think of course the better choice should have been the kaisa right there but they're still boom able to get one and alpha sneaking the baron here was all that they needed to just win this game close close call the zonias again mvp item here yeah and they're gonna be able to buy enough time the ga does also get caught on the kaisa and still waiting the back line and they forced the fight into different directions got kited out into multiple directions right there and just as they tried to fight the solo shockwave gonna be able to finish off the jana and look at that the irela goes all the way in tries to seal the dude the flash goes in they're gonna be able to get a more da bit more damage but nope gonna be the end of ziggs ends it with the ace and pushing it all the way to the base no contest as they just knock down the nexus easily as that yeah, Alpha, just a great, great showing in the late game. Able to win that very, very well. Still, a few mistakes here and there. Almost faster than the game, but almost doesn't mean they did. Lah. Yeah. They still won the game here. So they're one game away from making it into the top fours. And still, boom, if their game, their game plan was uh, is very straightforward, they're just trying to scale up, trying to get the pokes from Ziggs and Varys. But let's take a look at the bands here. Yes. Ben, 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 Ben. Sometimes I can't tell, you know. Sometimes, uh, yeah, it's all the ups around. As boom, this time they're gonna go for the first pick once again. As uh, this time, they are just going, they don't want to get the second pick, so they want to ban out the Gragas again. So same bans, I think. Yeah, I think it's gonna be the same bans again. Maybe sides for the uh, Ziggs. Maybe they might look to think of. To, oh no, okay, no, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen right there. So Fiora gonna get banned out yet again. But Alpha Pro, they're gonna get another ban. And okay, it's Ziggs. Ziggs ban here. So Alpha Pro, they do recognize that Ziggs is going to be quite strong from Boom. They don't want to deal with Platypus' Ziggs once again. And Boom are going to be banning out the Rangar here. So Boom definitely do have the chance to pick the Camille for themselves. Uh -huh. And I do think Alpha Pro, they do have to go for the Twisted Fate as well. Uh, to deny yeah. the Twisted Fate pick from Boom or else it's going to be quite scary here. So definitely going to be a Camille pick and Alpha Pro, they're going to get the Lee Sin. And I do think I really do think they should go for the Twisted Fate. Lah. Yeah, again, Twisted Fate is going to be very, very interesting to see. Again, any sort of fight you do start, you have to worry about, is this just one person fighting me or is there going to be a surprise party around me very, very soon, you know? And you're going to have to keep an eye on that. And it looks like they might. Okay, oh. no, no. They're going to be trying to secure their ADC first, so they're going to be locking in the Zaya here. Yeah, it looks like still, boom, they are able to get the Twisted Fate if they want to. But I don't think they're going to go for the Twisted Fate quite early on here. They're going to secure the support and probably secure the bottom AD, uh, Dragon Laner here. Uh, Dragon Fancy words up, Fancy yeah. words here. As Janna and Corky is going to be picked up. But it looks like the game plan from Alpha Pro is going to be similar. They're going to go for the Lulu once again. Apple has been a monster on this champion just doing so so well for his team and Kiza does still have the option to go for the Twisted Fate if he wants but Oriana has both won this the last game here so even though Alpha they did have a chance to go for the exact same comp uh -huh. they didn't want to go for it nope uh, but wait, there's also another champion that we have okay they're gonna be yeah, Twisted Fate, Twisted Fate, Twisted Fate, Ari, Twisted Fate uh, uh, but another mid, lane, mid laner that we haven't talked about that could work really well with Camille is uh, Galio yeah, Gallo was also it's also very good, but it looks like boom, they don't favor the Twisted Fate against the Oriana here. So they want to go for the Ari and Tufts is gonna be able to get his Renekton as well. And uh Patutin, just go for the Aurelia, man. Yeah, You're yeah, so good go. on the Aurelia. Let us take a look. Tufts this time. Hopefully he won't have a tough time. You have to look at me every time you say that one, you know, like you like you're looking for my approval. It's a good joke. It's okay. Yeah, see? Good joke. Good joke, man. It's a good joke, yeah. Yeah, you, don't, you don't need my approval, man. You gotta, you gotta I know stand you're by. I your approval. I just wanna see your reaction here. Yeah. <laughs> so, Renekton is gonna be quite interesting in this lane. Again, it's gonna be the, only the second time for Aurelia in this tournament. We haven't seen any matchups so far. And of course, Aurelia here is still gonna be quite strong, especially in the early game. Able to just snowball the lead. So, so crazy. So much sustain. Yeah. Kind of annoying, man. Very, very tough to deal with in general. So, gonna have to. <laughs> Okay, Chef. I get it. I get it, man. There's someone named Tough on the other side. I get it, alright? Okay? 
So we're going to get ready to drop into the second game of round three. Again, best of three. And it is, of course, Alpha Pro that are sitting nice and comfortable with that game lead. So going to have to see exactly if they want to just try and, uh, you know, steamroll this and just try to get that second win in a row. We're just going to have to wait and see how it's all going to turn out right now. So the players, they're dropping into the Wild Rift, but I, I really like the Irelia yet again. But now he has to face off against a Renekton here. Yeah, Renekton, of course, going to be able to get some sustains, some fighting abilities. Oh, yeah. But we are going to fight into the games here. Game two of the top eight. And if the side of Alpha are able to win this game, they'll go into the top four here. So Boom are going to be making a rotation. B Britannia is in the front line though, so uh, he doesn't walk into the bush directly. just wants to plant a ward and back off. He does take some damage, but no problems there. So again, we're going to be able to see a very similar draft for Alpha just minus the Kaisa here. Yeah. So maybe they don't like Kaisa against Camille. Understandable, mm -hmm. as uh, Zayat does have the Feather Storm to actually try to disengage from the Hexed Ultimatum. So, uh, interesting choice, but boom this time, they're going to go for something quite different. They're going to bring Platypus with his amazing, amazing, amazing Ari, and they're going to be able to have the Camille as well. But Tufts is actually oh, doing no. very, very good against Battle Team. Battle Team already ignited Ignite. up. One hit away, he gets the Yo. heal. That's barely one HP as he survives with that. Very nicely done. And, I mean, Tufts is feeling a little bit more confident in, in this lane. Yeah, so gonna have to reset though and just heal up and then make his way over. Does not want to stick around for very much longer because of course the food is gonna just try and keep the Irelia alive right there. So gonna be backing off right away. But it looks like it is gonna be a little bit of an advance coming in right here for the side of Vibritania. Just trying to stop the Oriana right there. But it's actually taking a little bit of farm for himself. Actually took, the I think he took the Canyon minion away. Gonna be very, very cheeky right there. But it is gonna be the Infernal Dragon that's popping up first. So it looks like they're going to contest for this bot scuttler right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lekila is playing quite slow. Uh, slower than I thought he would think, but now they're going to just be so aggressive. They're probably going to get the kill on the keys out. The nice flash with the nice attack right there will be able to get the kill. But traded out immediately by Leki. It's not Lekila, you know. I, think, I always think Lekila, but it's actually Lekia. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was gonna make a joke like Leg, you know? Oh, oh, oh. Like, like, like. but it could be Lucia. Lucia. Oh, you're right, you're right, man. I think it's Lucia. And it makes sense if it's Lucia as well. But look at this. Tuss is actually having quite the advantage over the Irelia right now. Actually, level four over to the level three right here. And he's working close to getting his alt right now. So gonna have to see exactly how that is gonna work out in the top lane right now. But gonna be able to secure a double scuttle even after uh, that fight over at the bot. They did draw it even right there, and uh, I, I think. He didn't expect Tuss to walk towards the brush right sword. there, so he just he just yeah, ah, that's I the want mind games, man. <laughs> and then you see the Sonic Wave. Maybe he might change direction to fake it out. Maybe he doesn't want to commit. Continues walking over Sonic Wave, whips completely, and it's just like Lucia's just like, oh, I see you. I see you, man. I see. I Wait, see how this is gonna go. <laughs> I see how it's gonna go. <laughs> As, uh, I mean, Alpha, they still have the slight goalie here with. I mean, just their macro has just been so, so great as uh, it looks like Patatine might want to just bait out Tufts here. Tufts does have the ultimate wave. He doesn't have oh the Ignite boy. though. He's just deleting Patatine right there as even like here, not able to get Lucia. Sorry, huh? sorry. Huh? Lucia able to not even get the trade right there. So, boom. They are fighting right back. This top side is looking way better for Tuff. And Platypus trying to do some damage towards Kiza. But again, we haven't seen Orena in a while. And I feel like Orena still so, so strong. Why are no people to pick? Oh, and finally, exactly. Lesia able to get the trade. Looks like he's always there for the trade. La. Yeah, at least right there. And uh, I, I call that the, the bait that gone wrong, you know? It's like, it looked delicious, I really. It looked delicious. Fake a skill, you know, miss something, and then bait them in. And then it's just like, oh, you died too quick. That's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> right there. So I, I had that a lot in my games. It's always really funny. But of course, it was really, really solid coming in from Tufts right there. Used every uh, possible skill in his arsenal to try and take out the really as fast as he could. But Tufts. He still is in the picture right here. Going to be able to try and return the kill right away. Actually, he just does not want the Irelia Patutin to just run away. Like, hey, I, I don't like what you did earlier. Just going to poke him a little bit, stun, and just make him run away right there. But Infernal Dragon it is going to be on the board right here. And both teams, they really want this in their pocket right now. Yeah, Alpha, of course, they are grouping up towards the bot side. They have a lot of control there. As they don't really have that much vision, however. So, boom. 
The art is probably gonna group up as well. Four versus four tufts. It's just gonna be able to get the top size cutter. Maybe try to catch out the rotation from Patutin, but still, boom, they're gonna be able to have some Hextech Ultimatums to try to get a catch. Maybe onto Apple here. And Patutin, of course, is trying to get a split push. But Tufts is gonna harass her her out as gonna pop the ultimate as well. So gonna be try quite aggressive. Patutin just gonna try to run away with the flash, but Tufts will not get the kill. And the Hextech Ultimatum does land oh and my Lulu steals the dragon. Dragon right there and takes down Fire Britannia. And that is not what you want to see. And Lysia tries to go in the shot with completely with the charm. is going to land, but the healing coming from the side of Lulu is going to be too strong. Tusk finally gets the kill on the Patatine, but in the mid lane, there is going to be a siege towards that side. They're going to try to deal some damage right there. The charm doesn't land once again, but the healing coming from Apple so, so strong. A lot of damage from the tactical sweep, but Lysia is going to be fine. Just gonna have a lot of sustain from Alpha and they're gonna be happy with that. Stealing the dragon and getting those kills can feel quite nice. Yeah, and I feel what happened in the top lane right there. Patutin was actually very, very low on health and didn't actually commit to running away. He might have just still target locked the skill and accidentally dashed towards uh, a Tufts right there. And Tufts was like, okay, I didn't realize you wanted to die. So I'm <laughs> going to kill you right here and secures that kill. So it's actually even in the kills, but after losing that Infernal Dragon right there, you got to feel pretty bad about it. They did try to siege down the mid lane, but it was uh, not really, not, not going to go down right there as they're able to defend it quite solidly. But the lanes have rotated off right Right now they're going to be trying to get a little bit more priority into the top lane as the rift hurl is coming up in about five seconds from now but actually a lot of the teams they're grouping up in the mid lane right here might opt to try to get more bit of priority in the mid lane right now and zaya is going to be significantly more farm than chalice chalice is not having the greatest of farm as you can see he is almost 1000 gold behind and already they're going to go for the infinity edge trying to go for the kill onto tops the nice flash away from the slow tough able to survive as boom are able to secure the river as well so they're probably going to be able to get this mid turret since there's no one left in the mid turret except for Kiza and Tufts is trying his best to get a defense here he will have the ultimate to uh, try to boost up a little bit they are going to go for the dive he will use it immediately but he needs to get the stun because there's a lot of damage to Lasia and they will take him down a rampage for Lasia right there but boom are able to secure the first turret of the game and they're looking for more they're looking to try to get the mid one as well to deal a lot of damage Kiza is there but then it has to be a bit careful one shot wave he could be taken down. Oh, there's no shortwave. Shortwave is on cooldown. So, boom, I'm just going to be able to trade the turret one for one. But they do lose Tuff, Tuff's life in the bottom lane. They lose Tuff's and they lose that bottom lane. But um, there's still going to be one more tower left on that bottom side right there besides their inhibitor, of course. So, going to be pretty, pretty okay at this rate. They did deal a lot of damage to the mid lane tower right there. So they are even in towers one to one. But of course, mid lane, it is looking a bit more damage than the rest right here. But top lane, it is about at half health and they know this and they're going to be able to siege this up and maybe take this down as Tufts hasn't quite been able to get up there just in time. I don't think they're going to even try to really defend this right here because I, I don't think it's really worth it. He, he might just get caught out right there, but no, going to run away. Again, too many people to try and stay in this fight and too many CCs to try and slow down but he goes back in anyway he's gonna have to just use his alt right there just trying to stay alive but the rest of the team i don't think they're gonna be able to come in time right oh, there but he are. goes he does manage to get a lot of damage the hexa ultimatum is gonna land onto the area they're gonna be able to finish them off right there a little bit of damage goes in they're gonna be able to kill off the lulu right there but only two members alive right there just trying to fight this out but they go in again the charm is good gonna be able to flash away before the orb is gonna land on the callback right there so just manage to dodge the skill shot right there the redemption is going to go down just to heal but there's not going to be enough damage to stop this as we do see corky i think he's going to try to cut them off right there but not going to be able to come in there in time they're going to just recall so he's just going to try to push out the mid lane right here but the dragon is coming up soon in about 10 seconds now yeah just alpha getting ahead in these fights once again it looks so good for platypus he was just not able to get the pick on to zaya and zaya just so so slippery able to get a flash oh he just dodges the orb once again as alpha even if this seems shaky now they are going to be trying to go for this ocean drake here boom look at the ocean drake just melting at this point no time what? for boom to even try to go for a steal right there's alpha looking very very prime to look very very nicely in this game and again in the bottom side tufts 
is still trying to get the farms up, but he is going to try to fight onto Patadin. Patadin is quite low though, but he is under the turret. He's going to pop the ultimate for the side of Tufts. going to try to go in, but Tufts getting that kill. Uh, almost solo kill at that, and Vibatana is going to be trying to help out. The Redemption is going to heal them back up a little bit, as Alpha are going to be there to defend the bottom side. So Boom are not going to be able to get that still. They are going to be down in the gold. They're going to be down in two dragons and Alpha. Even though they did give up a pick off one or two, they're still looking way better than Boom here. Yeah, again, so as we mentioned before, Alpha, they're doing a great, great job on holding whatever lead they have. They are trading out these kills right here, but they're doing a better job at securing these objectives as they have one more tower down compared to Boom, and they have been able to take every dragon so far, and uh, they did lose out the Rift Herald right there. They were trading it out for the bot tower, so they're, 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 gonna, they're doing decently in trying to just keep these objectives in their pocket and to denying it out of Boom's hands right here so they're doing a solid solid job but looking at how they're handling the waves coming in with the minions right now they are trying to get a bit more priority into each and every single lane before they can even think about going for yet another objective they probably want to try to look for another tower really really soon but they have to pick which one they want to go for right now yeah and alpha again this they do still have the momentum as we say but boom of course they're still trying their best. They are going to try to get some farm up. But look at Lysia. 9.6 thousand net worths. The most farm in this game. Just pretty much melting everyone for their side. And Tufts is actually doing quite well here. 8.9 thousand. Actually more farm than Patatine. That's why Patatine is going to keep losing all these 1v1 so far. He's going to get damaged with the stun. So he has to be very, very oh careful there against Tufts here. So do not underestimate Tufts in these fights. So now boom. Of course, he's going to keep some pressure towards the mid lane. They don't want this mid lane down. This mid lane down is a lot of map control as they are just trying to keep their advantage here. Tuff's finally going to be able to get the bottom one. They're going to keep pressuring Patutin even more. But Alpha, they have other plans. They're going to go for the Baron here. And I don't think they know this is happening right now. Actually, they do. They have the Scuttler in their favor right here. They're going to have to make a beeline to it. They're actually going to force the reset right now as they do see the rest of the members slowly making their way over into the Baron Pit. So that is actually going to be reset right there. Going to be a little a bit cheeky if they did commit to it right there. But I'm pretty sure if they did, they were going to get multiple members picked off right there. And that's not what you want when you have the Baron buff. You want to make sure all your members are alive so you can capitalize off of the buff as much as possible. So they're going to disengage. They're probably gonna try and look to take even one more tower in their favor as the tower leads have evened out right now but Lulu could get caught no not Lulu I'm sorry the Lee Sin I don't know all these L's just mixing in my head Lysia right now. Lah. Lysia yeah Le Lahi? Lysia I'm trying sorry. to get the he's trying to get the risk of Lula to watch the Baron okay so he needs to take care of the Baron the Baron is his baby here so Alpha of course that is gonna be their win condition they just need to find the right timing for it as uh, the timing, of course, is going to be even scarier and scarier the later the game on, game goes on as Boom is still trying to keep Alpha at bay. Tufts is still a very, very strong threat for Alpha to deal with here. Palutin, 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 Palutin. Ayo, I just say Palutin lah, okay? Palutin here is just trying to farm up. He's still quite behind compared to Tufts, but again, Corky is still 1,000 gold behind from the side of Zaya here because Zaya just been so so dominant able to have the static shift able to have the exchange calling trying to go for the next item here as well and boom of course they just need to try to get some pick offs but uh, they are just they have to be quite worried lah yeah, they, they, had to, they had to think about it a little bit right there. So, it looks like they're just <laughs> Sorry, guy. <laughs> also, my brain's scrambling, you know. Yeah, my well, mouth also scrambling, you know. I just don't know what to say. It's la. like, we can literally hear the static this game, of the game, 13 minutes, 6, 12 kills, you know. Yeah, but they, again, like they don't want to rush into anything right here. Right as I say that, it looks like they're just trying to start the bear right here, but getting caught out immediately right there. The package does get dropped to try and stop any push right there, but immediately as soon as everybody's there, everybody goes away. You yeah. know, they, there's like too much like, social distance, everybody had to scatter, go, and this disappear. Is a slow game, lah. Slow game coming from both teams. They don't want to, they don't want to risk anything here. There is going to be a solo attempt by the side of Lesia, but it's going to be quite difficult lah, actually for their side and in the meantime boom are just going to sneak the uh, dragon for themselves i think this cloud dragon is going to be quite good 
especially, but still not going to be able to give up the Baron just yet. And now Alpha, they are going to be knowing, all right, they went for the Cloud, and boom, Argus is going to go for the Baron, but it's not going to be too quick as they're not that farmed yet. They have to give it up once again as uh, they're not able to still get it. It looks like just trying to back it out on the Baron here, but it might come and bite them back in the future if, boom, are randomly just able to get a steal here. Yeah, and Alpha, they do have the gold lead right now. But again, as you mentioned, Patutin doesn't have the gold in her favor in just the matchup against the, the in, against Tufts right here. So if they try to 1v1, of course, Tufts is going to be able to try and win the situation right here. But looking at things right now, they are trying to draw it even right here. And Shockwave? Shockwave? Why? Shockwave just for that is to defend the turret and now they're going to get the engage on as Vibitana is going to go in. Platypus is trying to dash away. He does have all the dashes here. So Alpha... A weird usage of the shockwave, maybe to try to get a pick off, but challenge is going to be so low. It's going to get taken down here. So Alpha are at least able to split the fight and maybe try to catch them on the escape as Britannia has to use the flash right there. So Alpha looks like they definitely want to go for the Baron this time. Britannia does still have the smite as well to go for a steal. He also has the GA maybe to survive even longer. Tusk is all the way in the bottom side. Platypus is trying to make his way here and Alpha doing a great job keeping them back. The Sia is going to be hitting. The Baron is going to get knocked out with a Howling Gale. The Zonias is out. So Alpha, uh, they need to try to go for it. Tusk is finally in the fight as the Sia is so, so low. The GA is going to be popped. They are going to be able oh, to get Sia. Platypus here <laughs> and the steal is not going to happen as boom, they lose all their members here. And Ace for the side of Alpha. Alpha and Alpha after a long painstaking game, they are finally able to get something going here after so, so long. Yeah, they are going to be able to take out these men and heavier towers. It's going to be 30 seconds at the... Oh, oh my god! Go in and they're going to be going... That was clean! That was clean as can be. So they're going to be able to siege up on the Nexus. The backdoor protection going to go away very shortly right there. And they're just adding it up and right now it is Alpha. With the 2-0 over Boom, they're going to be taking it to the semifinals into the next, next round. They just played their cards right, man. They just played their cards right and they got the draw. They got the nice, nice positioning and able to just get the one pick up on the challenge. They convert it into a Baron take. So, so clean. Coming from the side of Alpha, they will be your first team into the top four here. Very, very well done. They really... Took it slow. Lah. Some might say too slow, but it worked out for them. It worked out really well. They decided to bank it all onto the Baron, and just the way they fought it, even though they tried to walk in, you saw the reason literally stop hitting the Baron right there. But let's take a look at the stats and see who exactly is MVP or SVP right here. Yes, MVP. <laughs> One kill for <laughs> Sir Zaya right here. I don't know. I, I wish I can read a Hanguk. Uh, I, uh, I cannot read. No. Opa. Oh, you at least <laughs> won't say that, lah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thus, it will be the SVP for their side. And again, a super, super close game. Boom, we're really trying to play this game as soon as they can, but just not able to find the opening right there for the side of Alpha. And Alpha just played this game so, so well. Let's see, 7 0 and 1. Somehow, he's not MVP. What is this nonsense? I, I don't know how they do it. So. <laughs> It is, of course, gonna be... Regla, this one. I don't know, man. I, I want to see how the damage went for the side, though. So, of course... Okay, that, that explains it. What, what, what means all? Oh, 10, 10 kill participation. Yeah, kill, uh, kill participation. But even then, Akko was there most of the time. But the damage... Zaya was there. I mean, uh, let's see, uh, he basically carried the early game. Uh. He got so many kills. He didn't die a single time. He did so, so well. Tufts really put on his game as well. But Tutin was not able to stand up to Tufts in this game at all, but still not enough from the side of Boom to make it into the top four here. Heartbreaking loss, but a loss is a loss. And still congratulations to the side of Alpha for making it into the top four here. Yeah, so unfortunately, Boom, the, the, I think they're the last Indonesian team in the bracket, so they're going to be eliminated, not going to make it to the semifinals. So let's take a look at the replays of that previous game to see how it all went down. Down, 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 upstairs, downstairs, Ooh. and Vibe Britannia is going to, going to try to get the kill onto Tiza so, so close, and finally going to be able to take him down. But of course, the CR always there for the trade. 
Always. He's always there for the train, you know. He's here. Patutin, he's trying to bait out. And let's see how. Waiting, watching movie. I think he realized, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. He's like, wait, wait. Patutin, you can see taken down. What's happening? As uh, again here, they try to go for it. And this Inferno steal was so, so heartbreaking Ooh. for the side of Alpha. Oh my goodness, and here again, gonna be able to take the kill, but Lucia, look, he's on the way, he's gonna try to take and equalize that right here, but everybody goes all in to try and take Tufts out right there, does, but he does do a lot of damage right there, trying to equalize everything, but not gonna be able to do anything right there, and this push coming in onto the top side, he's buying enough time to try to get the rest of the team to come in, he does die, the Hexa Ultimatum does go on Irelia, they are able to equalize that out right away, the root does go down for the Zaya, and they are gonna have to just reduce treat at this point and we do see that there was an attempt from platypus to try and get the kill the proto bell he is gonna let he's gonna help land the charm right there but a bit too far forward manages to do, dodge the orb on the recall right there yeah and here just but they're not having a great time in this game just not able to get anything going but of course this it's a team part. effort and this part it was just over for this for the side of boom being one man down and losing one of the biggest damage dealers from their side just so difficult to try to go for the push and by the time was all alone there's not many people to go for the peel they do get a charm onto the side of uh zaya but having the feather storm able to just get a disengage and doesn't even have to die and this during this whole time as the ga was popping for the side of by britannia he's gonna get taken down as well and ace only one left alive is chalice and he got taken down early on as alpha are gonna win this 12 to 6 a uh, nail biter of a game, super super like slow motion game until the end. As rap, the game over. Yeah, no team wanted to make a mistake. You know, they were at six six. They were staring each other down. Alpha did have the gold lead right there, but didn't want to do. You didn't want to overextend or didn't want to do anything crazy to try and lose that one right there. But Alpha Pro, they made the good call. They're able to take the game. And guys, that is all for today. That is all the games we are gonna have. And we're going to be doing semifinals and grand finals tomorrow. Yeah, so we are going to strap the stream a little bit. We're going to just uh, take a little uh, short uh, bye-byes for a while. Because we'll be back tomorrow, man. We'll be back tomorrow for the top four here. So do not miss that one out. It's going to be exciting, exciting as the top four will be trying to fight for the prize in the grand finals here. So... Last congratulations to the side of Alpha for making it into the top four, but will they be able to make it to the grand finals? We don't know. Yeah. My name's Shiv. And I'm downright fierce. And we're signing off. Good night. It's time to make your future. All you scientists, designers, engineers, entrepreneurs, and tech innovators, break ground, build bridges, build something we don't have a name for yet. Forget the status quo, forget stereotypes. Go global, change your environment, change the environment. Maybe just leave the world a better place than you found it. Like we have for nearly 200 years, now it's your turn. Be future made at Heriot Watch University.